Hey there everybody and welcome to today's stream of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Neo Fortune Cup. It's me Cooper and we are going to be having a lot of fun with all the new decks that we have today. The Neo decks are going to be a lot of fun to use. Well, we're not using them, but a lot of fun for the AIs to use and I'm super excited. So, welcome everybody. It's good to see you all in chat very early. We still got 15 minutes till the tournament starts and yet you all are here, which I do appreciate. But yes, the tournament will be starting soon. Um, I guess you don't need to see a bracket since we aren't really going to show that off for the next uh, five minutes. In five minutes, we'll show off the bracket. But hello there, everybody. Welcome to today's tournament. It's going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds based. And all the 5Ds characters are going to have a, all Neo decks, which means improved decks or completely new decks to make up for the fact that they used to be stall decks or they, they simply were bad decks that needed touch-ups. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see here, I do, hello there, hello there, it's good to see you all today. Um, yeah, so today's decks are going to be a lot of fun, I uh, put them together myself uh, for a lot of these characters. Will the champ be Yusei or Jack? It's possible, but we've already seen their Neo decks, their Neo decks have, uh, for Yusei has not been good, for Jack it's been pretty good. Uh, good afternoon, excited to see the new decks. I'm excited to see them too because uh, I haven't really seen them in action. I just made them. So I don't know how the AI is going to perform with them, but we'll see. Welcome Random Gamer, very happy to have you here today. Um, but yeah, so I have these decks ready to go. I don't have exactly a plan for them. I just know that uh, we hope that they work. Hopefully Yusei doesn't act like an idiot. I don't know why he's been acting like an idiot lately. I like, literally, I don't know how the programming just was worse for him. Like, intentionally choosing to summon, like, level 4 monsters, synchro monsters, is just really dumb. But, uh, yeah, we'll hope that it doesn't go that bad today. Uh, for you, say at least. Akiza's deck has performed well, uh, Jack's deck has performed well. But the Neo decks today, when I go through the characters I, on the tournament brackets, I will let you guys know whether they're an upgraded deck or whether they're a Neo deck where, like, literally it's completely changed where... No matter what they had in the show, because in the show it was either a stall deck or a, a deck that's already used by somebody else, um, I completely turned it into something new. That still works with who the character is. Kind of like with Yugi, where I made Yugi a guy of the Fierce Knight deck, because that's still one of Yugi's cards. That's still his archetype, but it worked out really well with him. Yeah, you say does act stupider, but what are you going to do? If the AI just suddenly acts stupider, he acts stupider. There's nothing we can do. Um, it's almost like the brain of the game has gone down for some people, but up for others. I mean, look at Zane Truesdale. Zane Truesdale won an entire tournament like that, no problems. Um, and he's known as the Zane Brain, a guy that we make fun of all the time, who has been performing really badly until the last few tournaments where Zane started playing really well. Um, Yusei used to perform really bad, then he played well for a little bit, and now he's playing bad again. I'm trying to think about there. Seto Kaiba played really bad, and then he started playing better, and he's still doing good with the Neo deck. The Neo deck, he gets like top eight, top four, pretty much all the time. Top two, he got second place. So he's he's getting better. And then we have a bunch of new Neo decks today, which I will be showing off in just a minute, literally just one minute, and we'll see how it goes. Um, and I'm kind of curious to see which character is actually going to win today since so many of the decks are different today. So many decks have never been used, never been seen. Much like the Guy of the First Night deck on Yugi or what other decks have we completely changed? I'm, I'm trying to think about them. Let's see. How do you feel about Ghost Jack? Ghost Jack is just Jack Atlas. No real difference there. <laughs> like if Ghost Jack was a different person, that would matter. But Ghost Jack is just Jack. Hey, Welcome. I hope you're excited for today's fight, Snake of Naked. I hope you have a good time. Um, I know I'm excited. I'm excited to see these decks in action since I haven't been able to test them. I just made them, and I don't know how they're going to perform. But let's take a look at our competitors today. So we're going to take a look at the bracket today. And the bracket today is going to be uh, 40 characters. There are 45 D's characters. I only took out two. And the only two I took out were regular Carly and Dark, uh, regular uh, Misty. Their decks still exist, I just decided not to put them in today because I wanted to focus more on the Neo stuff. So, there's Neo Darksigner Misty and Neo Darksigner Carly, but not the other ones. So, here we go. We're going to take a look. No, I wouldn't use 5 Cs. Those characters suck. Um, here we go. So, we have Bolt Tanner using a much upgraded deck. It can almost be called a Neo deck today. Crow is using the deck he won the big tournament with. 
Callan is using an uh, upgraded deck today. Jacob is using an upgraded deck. Uh, Roman Godwin is using a Neo deck today. That's going to be a completely changed deck. Jean is using an almost Neo deck. It's upgraded because it's still Brony based, but it's it's almost Neo. Officer Trudge is using a Neo deck today. Divac is using a Neo deck today. Jack Atlas already has a Neo deck. Jinbei is using a Neo deck today. Zone is using a small upgrade, but honestly, I don't like Time Lords, so small upgrade. Uh, Leo is using the deck he won the two championships with today. Uh, Andre is using a Neo deck today, a completely new deck. Rally is using a Neo deck today, completely new deck. Lester is using an upgraded deck. Uh, Yoshizo is using a Neo deck today, completely different. Uh, Yusei Fudo is using, you know, his upgraded Neo deck. Brio is using a uh, upgraded uh, for his specific style of Brony deck, not for the other ones. Sayer is using a Neo upgraded deck, but it's it's upgraded because it's still Psychic Monsters, but it's definitely Neo because they're Psychic Monsters that don't exactly exist in his time period. Um, Harold is using a upgraded deck today. Ransborg is a brand new character, so we have a new character in today's tournament. He's on the gosh darn thumbnail, so I assume you guys already saw him. Aporia is using an upgraded deck today. Dragon is using a Neo deck today. Hunter Pace is using a Neo deck today, completely different deck. Uh, still has some of his stuff in it, but complete it's Neo. Mina is using the deck that got her second in the world tournament. Akiza is using her Neo deck as usual. Jaeger is using my deck. Sherry LeBlanc is using a Neo deck today. Primo is using an upgraded deck. Darksider Carly is using a Neo deck today, uh, which is still an upgrade of her other form, but it has a lot more to it, so it's going to help out. Uh, Grigor is using a Neo deck today, and Tinami is using a much upgraded deck today. Odin is in today's tournament using their deck from the video game. Taro is using a completely Neo deck, a brand new, nothing uh, nothing that you guys know about. Uh, Dark Sunder Misty is Neo uh, upgraded Neo, because it's still just her deck from the show, but it's definitely upgraded, and it has cards that are new compared to what she has, so there you go. Uh, Brave is using a Neo deck. Chief Armstrong, honestly, his deck did fine, so I'm going to keep him the way he is. Rex Godwin is getting a Neo deck today. Bruno is getting a brand Neo deck today. And Luna is getting a brand Neo deck today. So that is all the characters performing in today's tournament. All of them are 5Ds. This is this tournament, the Fortune Cup, is just for 5Ds characters, just to show off their new decks. Obviously, I did uh, Battle City with all the characters, but I didn't give them all Neo decks. I just focused on dual monsters and a little GX. Uh, and a little 5Ds. I only did, like, the main characters of 5Ds. And Zexel was there, too. But I didn't really upgrade them. Hmm. I kind of did. Well, either way, ignoring the Neo Battle City Tournament, the Neo Fortune City Tournament is much more focused. It's like, hey, we're going to see the new 5Ds characters. Let's see if these new decks can help them out quite a bit. Paradox, I know he came out when 5Ds was out, but at the same time, he's involved with all three main characters, so I don't really care about Paradox. Plus... Malefic Worlds, we'll save that for bigger tournaments. This is just 5Ds focused. Uh, welcome, Nitro. Welcome to today's tournament. So, let's see. We got Bull Tanner Crow, all these people showing up. I'm going to go ahead and set up the first fight in the background. So, the first fight is going to be Bolt Tanner versus Crow. As we all know, Crow's deck will be the one he used to win the 200 character tournament, whereas uh, Bolt Tanner's deck will be. Uh, a very high upgrade for what his thing is, because he is known as using an Ushi Oni deck, which meant he needed a lot more support to make that deck actually good. So, here we go. Uh, the question, does the Mega Man bundle come with both volumes? There is a version that does, Daniel, but you could also buy them separately. You'll know you're getting both if you're paying $60. If you're buying one, then you're buying, um, it's only $30. But that, I only know that from buying online. I don't know about physical copy. I assume physical copy you're getting both. Because I've never seen two separated. But I, I wouldn't know. I didn't buy a physical copy. In order to let's play it as soon as possible. I had to buy an online copy. As usual. So let's see here. Where are our favorite characters? Where are Bolt Tanner and uh, good old Crow? Crow is a fan favorite for sure. But we'll see what happens. Mystery deal. There we go. The physical Mega Man has both volumes. Good, good. They didn't separate it in that one. Paradox is plot revel relevant. I don't care. <laughs> I honestly don't care. 
I watched 5Ds. I watched the ending of 5Ds. I didn't see Paradox show up. Sure, maybe it was plot re relevant that they could just tack it on, but I, I could not care. That's like saying the Pyramid of Light guy mattered. Who the hell cares? <laughs> I mean, I made his own tournament, but he, he doesn't matter. Yeah, what was he? was Anubis, right? Yeah, Anubis didn't matter. It's like, oh, but there we found a way to stop the god cards. Honestly, if you want to stop the god cards, use piercing damage. Do burn. I don't know. You can win in other ways. His name was mentioned. Ooh. <laughs> His name was mentioned. Anubis matters. Aw, you guys are cute. <laughs> you guys are very cute. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and set things up. We have the two competitors ready to go. We got Neil Bull Tanner, and we got Crow Hogan using his best deck. So we're going to be starting the tournament in about five minutes. Yeah, in about five minutes. But we already have the characters ready because I'm so excited to see them fight today. But we'll see what happens. Yugi and Jaden don't matter. Okay, that's fine. Yugi and Jaden don't matter. Have you ever heard of Yu-Gi-Oh! R? Yes, that's the manga, right? Or something like that. Don't some of the characters from my AI tournaments come from there? Who do you think will win the tournament? Out of all the Neo decks, the one that I thought stood out the most... Ooh, that could win this tournament. That's tough. It's possibly Luna. Her decks seem to be... Really... Like, I didn't get to test it, but it seems like it would be a consistent deck. Neo Luna seems very consistent. Uh, I mean, you could always go with Crow since he's like an old standby. You know, he's always he's always good to bet on, but he hasn't really been he hasn't really been doing it for people lately. But Neo Luna, she's she's something special. She's some, it's not Battery Man. We already have a Battery Man user, but she is something special. So we'll see. But I don't know how her AI is gonna play the deck, so it's possible. All three of the wicked users come from Yu-Gi-Oh! R. Okay, then yeah, then yes, I know about Yu-Gi-Oh! R. I didn't read it, but I know about it because I had to I had to look into it just to find the cards and the people for the for the Wicked Gods tournament. Akiza, you Akiza has already performed pretty well, but she hasn't won a tournament yet, so I've kind of given up hope. Jack Atlas, he is still pretty damn good, but I don't know if he's gonna win either. You say, let's just hope you say AI doesn't act like an idiot today, but we'll see. Uh, Zone, I don't think Zone's gonna win the tournament. His AI can't play these cards in this game. So even though he still has Time Lords, because we don't have a Time Lords guy other than him, I, I don't want to put my faith in Zone. I really don't. I don't think I will either. Does Akisa have Ruddy Rose? I have no idea what that is, so no. <laughs> I don't know what that even is. Yeah, between all of these characters, there are so many new decks that I can't keep up. I don't even know if Ransborg's going to be really good, because his deck is like Warrior, but Burn. And he could do massive... Like, did you know his level 7 monster does 1,500 Burn and then still attacks? It's just a free effect. It's a free 1,500 Burn, and then you just still attack afterwards. You could do whatever you want. It literally just says, do 1,500 damage once per turn. Like, it's insane. You haven't missed anything. The tournament starts at 2 o'clock, and it's going to be 2 in 3 minutes, I believe. Um, will you be doing the other card professors from Yu-Gi-Oh! R? Eh, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. I got a lot of new characters already lined up. Like, even this Saturday, I have a new character joining our AI tournaments. Um, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to dive into the manga every time. I already have a lot of manga characters. You look at the Mad Lad Chaz, you look at Master Hero Jaden, you look at the three Wicked God users. I mean, we got, we already got some manga characters. We got a lot of video game characters as well. Um, obviously, Ruddy Rose wouldn't exist then because this game is old. Well, it's not old, but it's old, it's old compared to this. If you ever retire from the final tournament, it's going to be like three days long. I have no idea what that meant, but whatever. In Japan, Ruddy Rose is Blood Rose Dragon. Blood Rose sounds cooler. You could do the other guy in the Fortune Cup that was used. Ito? Who's Ito? Does anyone know who Ito is? I don't remember an Ito. Was he, what, what was his deck? Was he the brainy guy that was dueling Leo? I, I, I honestly can't remember. This is going to be Tag Force 7. This is not Tag Force 5 or 6. Granted, in YouTube, they don't have Tag Force 7, so you have to just put any other Tag Force in the thing, but... Yeah. Does Leo have Livestream Dragon? Yes, in this game, he does have Livestream Dragon. But, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know much about this other guy. Professor Frank? Eh. 
<laughs> I, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I, I, I know I know he was in the tournament, but I, I don't remember his deck being nearly as interesting. At least with this new guy, his his card existed, so I was like, oh, let's put the masked, uh, masked warrior guy in there, or masked knight guy in there. Uh, we already do that, Snake. Uh, I don't need... I'll, I'll, I don't think I'll ever stop doing tournaments. I need money, and this is how I get my money. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever stop. But, um... We'll see. Well, we'll see. Uh, no matter what, we do big tournaments. I just haven't done a big one since uh, Neo Battle City. Neo Battle City. And then the one before that was 250 characters, so that one was really big. But, uh, yeah, I can't quit. I can't quit doing tournaments. This is how I make money. And by the way, it's time to start a tournament. Let's get it going, everyone. It's time for Crow vs. Bolt Tanner. And this should be a lot of fun because we get to see Bolt using a much upgraded deck with his, uh, what is it called? Ushioni. So let's see how his Ushioni does. Yeah, if you want to watch the 250 character tournament, go on YouTube. It's under Shadow Realm Tournament. It's five episodes. It took five episodes to get that one done. So we got Black Wing or Black Whirlwind. We got uh, Steam the Cloak. Okay, and he's already got Bora, so that means he's not going to synchro. I would have made Armor Master just for safety. And now you're staring down a Jirai Gumo that could easily destroy your Bora. And Jirai Gumo cost him 4,000 life points. That is not good. All right, and not only that, but he had Kalut, so not only, he lost. Bolt Tanner does not get to show off his new deck today, which is completely fine by me, because uh, Crow Hogan has not won a duel in a very long time. So, how about a turn three victory to start off the tournament? Oh yeah, we're not even done yet. Look at this freaking field here. You're going to Synchro Solution? You're going to do anything special? No, you're just going for game. Okay, he's just going for game. I don't think Bolt has anything on turn one unless he has Mirror Force ready to go. Sorry, there's a little bug there. And he's going to use that card to buff it up to 18. That's going to be it, everybody. Three, turn three victory. Record for the day because there is no record yet. Hey, welcome to the casual cruise, Omni Invalid. Thank you so much for following or joining us as a YouTube member. So there we go. Crow has defeated the new character, uh, the Neo Bolt Tanner, very quickly. And honestly, third turn is pretty rough. So let's go ahead and go into the next fight. The next fight is going to be Jean versus, what's his name? Officer Trudge. Oh, God, Officer Trudge is good now. All right. Officer Trudge's deck has been improved to make it so he summons Goyo Guardian a little more often. And Jean has also been improved. In fact, quite a lot. <laughs> We're going to find out which one's been more improved, though, in a duel against each other. In my opinion, I want to go Goyo Guardian's probably too busted. I'm going to say Bolt. I, I, I'm going to say, uh, not Bolt, sorry. I'm going to say Officer Trudge is going to win this duel. I think Trudge has it in the bag. But you guys tell me which one you think is going to win. You guys like Bronies more? Or do you guys like, uh, I don't know what Trudge would actually be. He's Warriors? I, I don't know what he is, actually. Yeah, I know. We spent a lot of time talking about what Bolt's deck could do now, and he didn't get to do any of it because uh, Crow is still known as the 200 character champion. He's still a monster. He's a cop. Yeah, he's a cop. I don't really want to call him a cop deck. It, you know, it doesn't work out. Stingent security. A security deck. Okay, security works. We're going to call it a security deck. And he already has a level 1 tuner on the field, so now he just needs a monster. And his monster shall be the Gate Blocker, which equals a Synchro Summon. His Synchro Summon is going to be the Stingin Sergeants. And with this card, he's going to do a lot of damage. Again, I want to thank you, Zaname, for being a YouTube member. But John has the perfect trap card to stop it. Horn of the Phantom Beast now buffs John, and it looks like Trudge does not have a back row card. Which is really bad, because his opponent has Trident Warrior, which if there's a level 3, and Mind Mold. That's a lot of damage showing right now. Oh, this is really bad. Okay, well, Trudge is in a lot of trouble here. He's going to need to pull off a better combo than he did earlier. Granted, his monster was good. He got a Synchro off, but his Synchro just wasn't strong enough for the trap card. Maybe Trudge should find some traps he can rely on. So we're going to go ahead and play Jute Fighter, but I don't think Jute Fighter is going to do a darn thing. Oh, wow, it can actually do that. I did not know. Well, it did that, and swords! He bought himself some time, maybe. So, now that he's buying himself some time, Jean's going to need to think of something. He's going to go ahead and play Chain Dog. Chain Dog's a pretty good card in general. And uh, this gives uh, Trudge a chance to get a level 4 monster on the field for Goyo Guardian. And he's going to summon a level 4 monster, and he's going to use Effect of Jute Fighter. I guess that's fine. And he's going to summon the Goyo Guardian. That's what I'm talking about. Trudge gets out his boss monster. This is his most iconic card. And a card that is super well known because it was used in Yu-Gi-Oh! professionally uh, for quite a while until I believe it got nerfed. 
And we got Swords on Swords, so he countered Swords. Okay, not bad. With a counter Swords, that actually will buy him the time he needs. And Goyo Guardian is just going to sit there because neither character can actually hit each other for a little bit. Which means both of them gets to try and summon their boss monsters, but it looks like Jean's having some trouble. Jean's going to be able to go in next turn, but he doesn't have any of his unicorns, and his unicorns is what he needs. It got banned, then nerfed. Damn. That's how good Goyo Guardian is. Level 6 tuner with level with 2800 attack. There's literally no downside. It's too busted. Uh, Key Mouse is on the field, so he can make at least a Thunder Unicorn if he wants. And he's going to go for Thunder Unicorn. That monster could easily defeat the Goyo Guardian. Thunder Unicorn just has to nerf the Goyo Guardian using its effect. And that will... Oh, nope. He's going after Trident Warrior because I, re I just remembered that he needed another tuner monster to synchro after the fact. Uh, but even then it- Oh, Horn of the Phantom Beast! So he could have defeated the Goyo Guardian, he just chose not to, he chose to win the duel! And John wins the duel by brutalizing, uh, Trudge and winning around the Goyo Guardian. There we go. The leader of Team Unicorn will continue on. So even though we got to see the Goyo Guardian, John found a way around it. And now we're gonna move into the next duel, which is gonna be our boy Leo taking on Zone. Zone is still using his uh, Time Lord deck, I only can wish him luck. And Leo is using the deck that won him two tournaments in a row, so we'll see how he does with that one. So where's my little bro Leo? We're gonna get him in there. And we're gonna see how these two do against each other. Now Leo is known for having a lot of high power monsters. He's like a little Zane in his own way. But Zone is known for being kind of an anti-deck, an anti-damage deck. So you need, unless he runs out of cards, he's uh, pretty brutal. He's pretty brutal. So he's just going to set, 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 pass. Very good start from our buddy Leo. Let's see what our buddy Zone decides that he's already got Mitchy. Mitchy's coming onto the field. Mitchy's going to attack Borden. Borden's going to uh, take four. Okay, Leo has taken 4K on the first turn. That's a very bad start for Leo. United We Stand is a very good thing if he had more than one monster on the field, but he does not have more than one monster on the field, so that kind of sucks. Looks like Leo just happened to draw a bad hand. And Mitchy's going to go away, which means at least he has some more, and she can get him whatever he wants. Sandy will do 2,000 damage, so that's pretty bad. And there we go. 2,000 damage will be dealt, and he lost his monster because he did not have another monster on the field. That really sucks. Yeah, Leo, very bad hand in your, in my, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That was a very bad hand for Leo. Trap stun, he's going to try and go in, I guess. Nope, why would you even activate trap stun then? Like, I can't even think of a reason. Sandy is going to leave the field. Zone just needs to get Sandy again, or Kami. Let's see what Kami does. Kami's going to go in, and Kami's going to bounce that card back to the deck while doing 500 burn. Damn. Well, that's a shame. Well, we're going to get Boomboxing out, and God said no. <laughs> okay, we're not going to get Boomboxing out. If you have the God Says No emo, go ahead and use it. Oh, wait, this isn't Twitch. I don't know if YouTube members still get that over time, but we'll see. Right now, we have a bunch of back row from Leo, but as long as... Uh, and, and the second zone gets uh, Sandy, it's over. Once we see a Sandy, time... That guy doesn't work, actually. That guy's not going to save uh, zone anytime soon. And it looks like Leo, after losing just a few monsters, is already in trouble with a brick problem. Is he getting all of his equip spells? Well, Radeon's here. Radeon's going to destroy that card, which is good? Yeah, I think that's fine. And Dark Hole says no. All right, Dark Hole says go to hell. Zone is brick, but Leo doesn't have any monsters. Leo does get a monster, but it's not worth using. And Royal Decree says no more trap cards. Okay, so there are no more trap cards. And Leo just needs a monster. And there's Sandy to end the duel, so never mind. <laughs> okay, Leo will lose the duel because he did not go super aggressive when he had the chance. So there we go. Because he did not draw the monsters at the proper time. With that, Zone is going to move forward with the Time Lords, which, honestly, the Time Lords is more of a luck-based deck, but we'll take it. Looks like this doesn't feel like loading right now, so the next duel is going to be the Neo Yoshizo, which is a brand new deck we have not seen in any of our tournaments. So get a little excited for Yoshizo, because it is going to be a new deck. And seeing as he's a character that is based off of, like, you know, bat, he's like, like, he's from an area where he can't get access to good cards. I gave him a pretty, let's say, Slifer Red deck. <laughs> However, even though it's a Slifer Red deck, it still has a good card in it. If only one. It does have a good card in it. Whereas Yusei Fudo is Yusei freaking Fudo. I hope he actually plays better today. But we shall see, because I can't trust this guy for the life of me. At least not recently. 
So we're going to see the Neo Yoshizo take on the Neo Yusei. Let's see how these two do against each other. This is going to be Team Tayo's Yoshizu and, uh, t or Yoshizo and Team 5D's Yusei going at it. If this was the show. And we got two sets and a pass. So Yoshizo, show off your new deck. And his new deck is Ally of Justice Quarantine. Quarantine is going to get stopped by Scrap Iron Scarecrow. And he's going to go ahead and set a card. Now we got Junk Synchron pretty early, but as long as he has Doppel Warrior, that's going to work out just fine. With this combo, he can make the Excel Synchron, and Excel Synchron's going to have two monsters to combo off of. So we're going to see what it can do. So he's going to throw away a card. He's now level 7. Is he going for his legendary Stardust Dragon? You bet he is. Yusei Fudo has his legendary dragon, and that card will protect him from any traps. Like the Mirror Force, Yusei Fudo has ruined Yoshizo. He has no Mirror Force, but he does have one monster, so if he finds a way to Synchro Summon, that is his only hope. The, du the duels have just started, Yu-Gi-Oh. Don't worry. We have not really done anything else. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and attack. He does have Synchro Monsters, but he's- uh, he does have a Tuner Monster, but he's not gonna Synchro Summon. And we have Limiter Removal, which destroys Stardust Dragon, and he Synchros on Main Phase 2! Yoshizo's playing really well, he's got Ally of Justice Light Gazer. And Reinforce the Truth is like, oh shit, I'm getting my butt kicked by freaking Team Tayo here. And now he's gonna need to get a Tuner Monster. That was a really good play by Yoshizo, and he got one! He got the Junk Synchron, he's got Synchron Explorer, he's got Doppel Warrior, he's got options. He's gonna go for a level 7 monster, that monster will be the Junk Berserker, which this card can easily destroy the opponent, with all the Doppel Tokens working together at the same time. Junk Berserker is going to weaken the monster, and Junk Berserker is going to weaken the monster, you gotta believe it. And that's going to make it so even a Doppel token can take out the monster. So, even though Yusei had a pretty rough start from a really good play from Yoshizo, you gotta play better if you want to beat a main character. A main character is pretty brutal. So, Yoshizo's going to need to think of something else. He's got Dark Hole. Thanks to him beating Stardust Dragon by battle, Dark Hole does matter. And, of course, uh, we know Scrap Iron's on the field, so... Scrap Iron Scarecrow will stop that from being an issue. Pretty good plays from Yoshizo so far. Tuning's gonna make a big difference. That is the final Junk Synchron. All he's got left is Quick Draw Synchron after this. Junk Synchron is gonna come back and it's gonna use the Doppel Warrior. Honestly, about the now would be a good time to use Junk Warrior. Just go for damage. Just don't play it in defense mode like an idiot. And oh, for once he plays it in attack mode. Thank you, God. And let's summon two more Doppel Tokens because he can't help himself. We only just started the uh, the duels. Tournament started uh, twenty mi or ten minutes ago, and there we go. Yusei Fudo's in a very good position against Yoshizo. Yoshizo showed that his deck can have options, but he also needs to find a way to beat someone as consistent as Yusei. Which I don't know if Yoshizo's deck has that much uh, safety behind it. So we have another Synchro if he wants it. He's not going to Synchro Summon, which seems like a bad play. And I guess that's it. Reared. I would have Synchro Summoned for Junk Archer and won the duel if that was an option. I guess he just didn't want to. And we have one trap card left for Yoshizo. It's got to count. He already lost Mirror Force, though, so it's got to be something else. We got Stardust Yao Long, and we got a massive Synchro Summon coming in. All right, which one are we making this time? We got Junk Destroyer. It's going to destroy the trap card. That's so perfect. Wait, we got this card, Card Reader. What is that going to do? It does not matter. That was not called the Haunt. It wasn't going to save you anyway. At the end of the day, Yusei Fudo took down the brand new Ally of Darkness Yoshizo. All right, there we go. Duel number three, or four of the, is that four? Duel number four of the tournament is over. Yusei Fudo will be moving forward. The next duel will be our brand new character, Ransborg. That's right, everybody. The brand new character is here to duel. And I'm going to get him on the screen as soon as possible. All right. Let's see here. Where is he? He just made his deck, so he can't be hiding from me. Crap, I forgot where I put his deck. Oh, it's by Chump Daddy, of course. There we go. And next, we're going to need Aporia. So, Aporia, where are you at? There we are. Let's see how these two duelists do against each other. 
So Ransborg is going to be using a brand new deck. It is going to be a Mass Knight deck. He does have his boss monster in this game. I don't know if they ever made it for real life, but they did make it in this game. So here you go. Ransborg versus Aporia. And we're going to go ahead. No, teams. Wait, this is only duel number five. So obviously Team Tayo is still in the tournament. We only lost one member. Uh, we got Trident Warrior, which is a great start, and then it's going to combo into Marauding Captain, which is a weird person to combo with. I don't even know if I would combo with that card, but screw it. It worked out for you. And we got a Mechlord guy. And we got, uh, that Blast card to blow up two monsters. I would have saved- Oh, I don't- No, I would not have saved that. That was a great play. And it looks like Ransborg's in a lot of trouble now. Ransborg is going to have to go up against these men uh, these cards, and he does not have a lock- However, he does have Intrigue Shield, which uh, I don't remember what that does. Okay, it did that. And Magic Cylinder does 4,000 damage, which weakens that monster to 2,000 attack. So Ransborg has put himself back in the duel. However, he's got Warrior Returning Alive, which is going to get a really... Okay, he can now overpower the monster. Only one, but he can overpower it. So Ransborg's going to overpower Mechlord Emperor Granel. And with that, it looks like he's out of cards. So Ransborg has shown you everything he's got. His Intrigue Shield has made a difference. His Magic Cylinder has made a difference. And we got the Resolute Mechlord Army. I have no idea what that does. They cannot be destroyed by battle. Okay, got it. Mechlords can no longer be destroyed by battle, but we have a Tribute Summon for Mass Knight level 5. TT gets activated! And he's got a Mechlord Emperor in hand. He's got Skeel. It's the weakest one, but he's got it. That TT was very important. And he's got a Mechlord Fortress. That's 2200 damage. It looks like Ransborg, our brand new character, is out of luck. He's got to top deck his way back in. Mass Knight level 5 is gone, though, so that's huge. All right, attack comes through. He saved Mirror Force for a, a monster, I guess, but that was not good that you saved it. You should have... Uh... Okay, well, you're dead. <laughs> if you were going to save it, you should have had that monster face up. Whatever. Pot of Greed's going to kick in. Ransborg does not have a fusion. Noble Knight Joan is on the field, and it has a trap, but will that trap matter? That Pot of Greed it was super clutch, probably. Noble Knight Joan cannot beat Mech Lord Emperor. Oh, God, it was Call of the Haunted. Oh, God, it's mass level 5, and it's still the standby phase. Why didn't he combo with it? He even did it on standby phase. Why didn't he turn into mass level 7? Alright, AI is going to be AI. I can't fix it. With all these monsters on the field, Nova Knight Joan can defeat it. Level, mass Knight level 5 can defeat him. And at the end of the day, Warrior Lady of the Wasteland will end the duel. Ransborg is the winner. GG, everyone. New character gets a W. So I'm sad he didn't get to mass Knight level 7. He could have done it. I don't know why, but he could have done it. The next duel is going to be Akiza versus Jaeger. Or Jaeger. We already know Akiza's deck, and we know Jaeger's using my deck. We know AIs aren't good at using my deck, but I still will make him use my deck. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, if he beats Akiza with my deck, I'll be super proud of him. I'll be so happy. You have no idea. I will be. It's not a synchro monster either, Robin. You're thinking to uh, remember these Neo decks have a little of everything. Uh, Akiza, Akiza. Where's Neo Akiza at? I have a keys up, I need her deck. There she is. Alright, now we just need good old Jaeger. Alright, where's our clown guy? You want to learn how to use clowns? You got to learn with my clowns. Start with my clowns, work your way up to Jester. See, uh, what, uh, Lexi got it right. They know what they're thinking. They know what I did. Where's my deck? Shit, where, when did I make my deck again? What deck number is it? Let's find out together, everybody. My deck number is 117. And now it's going to be Jaeger versus uh, Akiza. So let's check them out. Jaeger's using a clown deck that I was using in real life myself, and Akiza is using her uh, uh, plant deck. So we'll see how it goes. All in on Akiza? Well, hopefully she wins for you then. However, I prefer Clown Man to win since I'm a clown guy myself. And we already got Labyrinth of Nightmare, that's what I'm talking about. But you should play your monsters face up. Lone Fire Blossom is horrifying. And that card will special summon Talaya. Okay, we're in trouble here. And Thorn of Malice does piercing damage, so that is horrifying. But you want to kill Dream Clown, and you didn't kill Dream Clown. You're going to regret that. You're going to regret that, Akiza. You're going to wish you killed that clown while you had the chance. And he summons the Mystic Clown on top of it with Dream Clown in attack mode. Mystic Clown fails to Wall of Thorn! Damn it! Call of the Haunted! Bring that clown back! You don't let her win this. Don't you dare let her win this. Alright. Labyrinth of Nightmare puts Mystic Clown defense mode to protect Jaeger's life points. And Akiza summons the Botanical Lion. 
Botanical Lion's gonna go in, and Curse of Anubis says go to hell. And now that Botanical Lion's in defense and attack mode, I forgot, Labyrinth of Nightmare. He would have had 2k defense anyway, so not exactly something you want to go up against. Labyrinth of Nightmare puts Mystic Clown in attack mode, Jaeger did not understand that, damn it. AIs are gonna be AIs, guys, we can't, we can't teach them. Nichiria Cherries is really good if she goes for a Synchro Summon, but she will not. However, Curse of Anubis will keep him in the duel for now. I don't know why he's not using clowns correctly. You play your Dream Clowns face up, you goddamn idiot. Okay. One day I'm going to teach this guy. Yeah, you see, if you had that face up last turn, you would have already killed two of these monsters by now. Instead, you're going to do this, which you're still going to kill off the, the Botanical Lion. But this is going to be problematic. And we get rid of Nechiria Cherries, but now she's got two tokens. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the Botanical Lion on top of that. Botanical Lion shall die. And now she's going to have to think of something else. Now, she could revive a monster with the World Tree. She, it's her choice. She doesn't have to do this. Nope, she's just going to pop, and really, that was the most d dangerous card in her mind. Again, not really a good idea. But she got rid of Dream Clown. That was very important. So her monsters are now in defense mode. Her monsters have good defense, so good for her. Welcome, Jaw Dominic. And Russian Clown's gonna put that uh, Nature Cherry in attack mode. At least Jaeger's doing some damage with this deck, but honestly, he's not using it that well. Yeah, not using it that well at all. Now, Akiza, she's gonna play Twilight Rose Knight, which does matter, especially if she goes for Black Rose Dragon. And she's going for Black Rose Dragon. That is pretty massive. The Black Rose Dragon is gonna use its effect to put Rui Kishin in attack mode to do 2400 direct damage. And that is brutal. Now, granted, she only has 1,800 defense, but clown decks aren't known for their high attack stat, except for their fusion monster. <laughs> and Graceful Charity kicks in. It better be a damn good Graceful Charity. You threw away Monster Reborn. You threw away Monster... I watched you throw away Monster Reborn, Jaeger. I watched you throw... Never look at this duel, guys. When they're using my personal deck, don't look at it. We're going to see regular decks next in the next fight. She didn't summon a monster. Are you telling me you didn't have any monsters with 600 attack? I doubt you. MST is going to pop whatever that was. Let's see. Polynosis is annoying. And... Labyrinth of Nightmare will do nothing. He's complete... Uh, if that's a Dream Clown, I'm going to yell. Oh, it's Petey. Okay, Petey's good. And she drew a monster. Black Rose is going to end the duel. Damn it. Even Petey can't protect her. That's going to be it, everyone. Jaeger has lost. He can't use my deck. He can't do it, but he can't use a Jester deck either because it does involve stall, and we don't allow stall in these tournaments. So, Akiza is going to go ahead and win. The next duel is going to be a Neo Griger deck. It still uses the stuff he used in the show, but it has a lot of improvements with a Neo Antinomy deck, and Antinomy's deck is going to be really good. Honestly, TG monsters are pretty scary. What are they called? Tech Genesis monsters? They are pretty damn scary. Uh, in fact, he won a tournament with this deck, so you got to watch out for Antinomy. Well, this is the upgrade version, but whatever. And then we got Griger. Griger is also a pretty brutal duelist. He's got a lot of good cards in his deck, but we'll see what happens. Ah, uh, Griger, Griger, Griger. Where the hell's your deck? The problem is, I made all these decks together, so I don't know exactly where I put them, but I have them now. So let's go ahead and start the duel. It's going to be Griger versus Antinomy. These two characters should be good, but yeah, I would really like to see him summon Halberd Cannon today. He's done it once in our tournaments before, but I want to see him do it today. But we'll see. And we got Machina Armored Unit, and we got Solar Flare Dragon, which is really good with Griger's deck because he runs fusion monsters. So, let's see what Antinomy does against the first burn. He's going to MST. I would hit the trap. Yep, good. You hit Call of the Haunted. Good hit. Uh, you got TG Catapult, which means you might Special Summon. Let's see. He's going to Special Summon a Tuner Monster. Is he going to combo? He combos with TG Warwolf. Really good combo from Antinomy. He's going to Synchro only a level 5, but that's all he needs. Level 5 for Hyper Librarian. That's such a brutal card. Hyper Librarian is super good. And 900 damage. So, we're going to go ahead and set that down. So, what is he going to do now? Griger is going to just Brick, I guess? Okay, I don't know. You know what? There is two Bricks in his deck. He has Summoner Reactor and he has Sky Fortress. Those are Bricks. Granted, he has three cards in his hand, so I don't know how he's Brick, but we'll figure it out together. So, Griger, with only one turn left in your freaking... Yeah, you got one turn left. Make it count. All right, Griger, still no monsters. He's just disappointing all of his fan. Is there a fan out there? There might be one fan out there. 
And we got TG Cyber Magician, which is going to synchro from the hand, and we're going to get ourselves a uh, Wonder Magician. Wonder Magician is here, and with this, we get Hyper Librarian to draw a card. Wonder Magician's effect will negate that, or destroy that card, Jesus. And we got this card to get him more cards to the hand. Actually, what is this man doing? Antinomy, are you going a little ham today? Antinomy's going a little ham today, and he's going to try and end this duel, but Mirror Force said no. That's a shame. Wonder Magician says you get to draw a card, though, and Rush Rhino says here's a monster to make up for. Here's a falcon. Alright, so, at least he has a falcon, but what is Griger going to get? Griger, you don't have this many bricks, so what are you doing? And with this combo, he's going to TG into TG Jet Falcon into a level 5 Synchro. What is he making this time? Hyper Library. That makes sense. Just go for 24 beater damage. And draw a card one. Oh, and do- Oh, it's enough! With that, he did 500 burn, and that will end the duel. All right, really sh big shame from Griger, but great showing from Antinomy. So, we got one good deck to look forward to in round two. Antinomy is going forward. Now, this is going to be the last duel of round one of the tournament. This is going to be Brave with his upgraded deck going up against Chief Armstrong. So, basically, the duel is going to be Chief Armstrong and his Iron Chain deck taking on Brave and his Le Loki deck. If you guys have forgotten, uh, Loki is the deck. So, what is Armstrong? Where are you hiding from me? Armstrong, I made you a long time ago, so it's... Uh, okay, not that long ago. 124. But still. Now I just need good old Loki Man Brave. I should just call Team Ragnarok after the characters. I hate that his name's Brave. Call him Loki. Make my life easier. And there we go. We are ready to start the duel. Let's see if we get to see a Loki today. And from the other side, let's see if we get to see the Iron Chain Dragon. I hope we get to see both. So Armstrong is already here. Brave is here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, bro, Armstrong has won some great duels because he has a burn, deck out, and just damage deck. He could do everything. With Having a little of everything has put him in, in a pretty good advantage. So... Part of his chain, uh, his Iron Chain deck is Chainsaw Insect. This is part of his deck out strategy, and Mystic Tomato actually will help with it. Ooh! He already has a level 5 tuner out, so you should be careful, and you're dead. Okay, well, Armstrong has a pretty bit, uh, pretty bad start compared to Brave. Brave's gonna summon a level 4 monster. He just needs a level 1 monster, and he could summon Loki. Call the Haunted will save Armstrong by putting uh, Chainsaw in uh, Insect on the field. That puts him in a much better position. Alright, Gregor's deck is cool mechanic, just poorly executed. It is, yeah. Iron Chain Repairman is going to go in. It destroys the Tuner Monster. That's a big loss for Brave. And Repairman's going to do 300 burn. And this card's going to help with the deck out. So he's decking out, he's burning, he's doing all this stuff. Granted, he's got to be careful. So we got Glefner to get him whatever he wants. He got his Tuner Monster back, but it's a level 5, so it's not easy to summon. Pot of Greed's going to come in. And we got ourselves Dark Eruption to bring back Mystic Tomato. That's a much easier way to summon your monsters with Mystic Tomato. Maybe you should have done that instead of putting it in your hand. I don't think I agree with the put it in your hand strategy. MST is going to get rid of Fires of Doomsday. He realizes he doesn't want to lose Fires of Doomsday and just gets them out there as soon as possible. Hmm. Okay, Giant Rat's hitting the, the field. Giant Rat's going to be a great card. Obviously, get rid of the tokens first. You don't want to let them have that. Of course, if you knew they had Mystic Tomato, maybe you should have attacked that card. And we all know he had Mr. Tomato, so he can get his tuner back out if you want. What the fuck? Are you telling me all of your tuners are in your hand, which means you have no tar- Did you have no targets for Mystic Tomato? What are you even doing this, then? Oh, you lost anyway. Blast with chain. Oh, my God. Okay, well, we're not seeing Loki today. I'll tell you that for free, because this man- Oh, he did have a target! Wait. You had a target. What are you- Wait. What the f- Why? Why are you like this? Who made you like this? All right. Do the burn. Do the damage. And honestly, Iron Chain Blaster might end the duel. Drawing that Iron Chain Blaster might have ended the duel. I think it did, actually. Yep, it did. It ended the duel. And just like that, Chief Armstrong takes out one of member of Team Ragnarok in the Fortune Cup. So, Iron Chain Blaster will do its 800 burn. Great job. Armstrong, yeah, you did great today, but Loki, you disappointed. We wanted to see Loki, we didn't get Loki. So let's go ahead and move Armstrong forward. We're going to move up now, back into round two of the tournament. Round two of the tournament shall start with Kallen and Crow. As we saw from Crow's first duel, he is actually going to try and duel well today. 
So let's see how it goes against another main character like Kallen. Both of these characters have voice actors in the game. Looking at these two characters, I'm going to hope and hope that Kallen plays well because as we all know, Kallen is hit or miss with his deck since AIs and Infernities don't always go together, but we'll see. And Crow, it can be hit and miss as well, even though he's an amazing duelist. He shouldn't be hit and miss, but Crow has been hit and miss. Sometimes he has an oops all tuner situation. Let's just hope that doesn't happen. Here we go, everyone. We're going to see Kallen take on Crow. Now, Crow and Kallen both have had incredible victories in the past, uh, but Kallen has never won a tournament, so we're going to see if he could do something about that today. Crow's going to start with the perfect card, Black Whirlwind, which makes his deck actually good. That's not a great start when that's all he has, which means he can't really search for the cards he really wants. Okay. Okay. His opponent has MST. He's going to hit Black Sonic. Is a major hit. Infernity Beetle comes in. And Icarus Attack is a really bad play. That was uh, that was a really bad play, in my opinion. Granted, your opponent still has uh, cards in his hand. No, he does not. Never mind. Still a really bad play by Crow, but whatever. And we're going to go ahead and summon... Oh, wait. He had a backup Black Whirlwind in his hand. Never mind. What's up, Nathan? Welcome to today's tournament. And Zephyr might be hitting the field real soon. And we don't have an Oops All Tuner situation because there is a token on the field, but that token isn't a high enough level to do anything. Damn it. <laughs> he has all these monsters and it is all tuners. And he doesn't own a level 4 synchro monster, so he's in a little bit of trouble. Alright, well, let's see what happens. We got ourselves Infernity General. Infernity General is going to use its effect to bring out Infernity Necromancer and Infernity Beetle. Both of these cards have uh, effects that could be activated, apparently are not going to be activated. And that's going to be it for Kallen. At least Kallen is going to be good since he doesn't have a hand, which means he could just top deck the best cards. He summons a new Blackwing card I'm not too familiar with, and got another Zephyr to special summon. This time we can actually see a Synchro summon from Crow, so I pray to God he actually goes for one. There we go. We're going to get a Synchro summon. This is his piercing damage Synchro monster, Blackwing Armed Wing. Which is actually a good monster. However, Void Trap Hole says go to hell. Yep. <laughs> that sucks. Alright. Well, now what? He sets a card and he plays Infernity Launcher. Infernity Launcher will special summon a couple cards. He's got a level 4 monster, a level 2 monster. I'm afraid this does not equal the correct levels that he needs. Infernity Archfiend gets him Infernity Archfiend. Infernity Archfiend summons Infernity Archfiend. And Infernity Beetle will use its effect to summon two more. And now he has uh, a lot of monsters on the field. This is actually looking really good for Kellen, But they don't have the proper levels to make any of his synchro monsters, which is a big shame. Either way, just having four monsters to hit your opponent with is really nice. Especially now that he doesn't have a token left over. So, there you go. Crow lost everything. Crow's going to have to come back with just a top. Whoa! That's a hell of a top deck! And he had a monster left over. Why the hell not? Holy crap, that was a good top deck. And there we go. We got ourselves a resummon of Steam the Cloak. At the end of the day, though, Kellen's okay with having no, ha no hand. He actually likes having no hand. And that no hand results in him just getting a set, but it's not Infernity Launcher. And just a couple damage from Crow. He's not drawing Bora. He's not drawing his, uh, at least, uh, Blizzard something. Where's Kalut when you need it? You need something. Shura. Shura's pretty good. Use your Shura. And he drew his Infernity Archfiend. And why are you doing that? Are you telling me? That if I played the story mode of this game, Kalin would do that bad of a play against me. Like, I've never played the story mode of this game. But you're telling me that if I ever did, this is the AI I should expect to go up against. Literally brain dead. I don't even play Infernities. And I know that that was a stupid, stupid play. He threw away one of his best cards for no reason. Like, I understand that trap card on main phase 2. It has value. Oh, you lost everything, dude. Oh my god. Oh, oh my. You know what? Just, just, Crow, end the duel. Crow, Crow, summon a mo- Crow, where is your monsters? Where are your non-tuners? You have, like, eight, right? Where are they? Just kill them. I don't want to see Kallen anymore. I don't want to see Kallen anymore. Oh, they're sure. I was waiting for you. 
Sure gets Kalut. There you go. See, this is Yu-Gi-Oh. Level 5 Synchro. I don't think you need to, but whatever. I don't care. All right. And we got ourselves Kalut. Sure, why the hell not? And level 8 Synchro. Okay, Crow summons his boss monster. Boss monster is the freaking Black Wing Dragon uh, Black Feather. And that gets him a token. And he goes for 2800 and he wins the... Well, hold up, we got Inferity Break. And Inferity Break destroys it. But it doesn't matter because Shadow Impulse brings it right back. He's got himself a boss monster. He wins the duel. All right, Kalen sucks. That is uh, really disappointing. That Kalen sucks that bad. He could have come back. He could have come back, no problem. So, moving on to the next duel, we're going to have, once this loads, Jacob versus the brand new Roman. So, Roman, because he was a stall deck, needed to be touched up quite a bit. He only got to keep a few of his monsters. Roman Godwin is basically a new deck. Yes, I let him keep his Earthbound Immortal. Yes, he still has a field spell, but it's not his field spell, because his field spell has to do with stall, and we don't allow stall. We don't do that here. Uh, let's see here. Where is Neo Roman? Ah, there we go. So you guys can start making your guesses on what Roman's deck is going to be. Now that uh, his deck had to be edited. Due to the spider deck being a stall deck. He does get to keep his synchro monster and his boss monster and a few of his baby monsters. But uh, overall his deck had to be overhauled. So, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Stall doesn't get to do that anymore. Let's go ahead and do this. It's time. Roman versus our buddy uh, uh, Jacob here. All right, we're good. So let's see what the deck has now. We're gonna go for a set card trader, of course. Of course, good old, uh, good old Jacob. And Solemn wishes to keep his life points healthy for his boss monster. Makes sense. And a brick from uh, Roman should not be possible with the deck he has, but apparently it's possible. But we'll see why he's, it's possible in a second. And we got Mechlord Army of Grinnell and a Giant Rat. Really good combo for him. That combo will go in, and that's 3k damage to Roman. Roman, you need to top deck any monster card. You have 23 monsters in your deck. I should know. I recently built your deck. You have 23 monsters in your deck, five of which are tribute. You're not going to tell me you drew five tribute monsters. Because then I'll yell at you. All right, Mechlord Army of Grinnell comes out. That's going to be a ton of damage, but no entry will keep him in. Roman, please summon a monster with your new deck. Oh, Mausoleum. Well, it's a little late for that, but maybe he'll do something. He's going to pay 2k. His 2k will get him Earthbound Immortal Uru. Uru is going to go in for a direct attack, and he's getting Threatening Roared. Okay, having Uru is really good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Having Uru is going to be very helpful for him. But his opponent has so many life points that if he gets his boss monster, Uru is not strong enough. Double card trader would be very funny though. So let's see if he wins with his Earthbound Immortal. And he's going to go for Wormbait. Wormbait's going to summon some tokens. At least he has tokens. And now he's going to go direct damage for 3k. That is pretty good. It is the Spooter Earthbound, that is correct. We got Jacob back to 8k life points, but he's going to continue to heal. He's probably going to put some monsters in attack mode. He's going to Kartrayer twice, just to heal twice. Damn. Damn, that's a good play from Jacob. Really good play for the heals. Uru, even with 3k attack, can't win that quickly. Giant Rat's going to go in, and uh, Grinnell's going to go in. And now, yeah, Roman, I think you need... Well, you can only have one Earthbound Immortal, so I don't actually know what you can do. Threatening Roar is going to stall again, which means he's going to heal another 1,500 life points. Jacob is waiting for a proper trap card to stop Uru, and he's buying himself all the time in the world. That is pretty freaking brutal. Yeah, Roman Godwin, you got your boss, but your opponent doesn't care. Also, you're probably going to need more than just your boss monster. Don't have one monster out. There you go. We got Fire Ant Ascator, a, tu a tuner monster, and it's being imitated into a level 4. His level 4 is Spider Spider. That makes sense. And Lair Wire is going to get rid of one card. Giant Rat is gone forever. Spider Spider is going to destroy that monster. And Uru is going to do 3,000 damage. Very brutal. Good play from Roman. He got him back to 8k. Oh, wait, he's going to heal 1,500. Because that's what Jacob's deck can do. With double card trader and one Solemn Wishes, that's 1,500 life points. Let's just thank God he doesn't have two Solemn Wishes. 
And with that, there goes the Spider Spider. What a shame. So, Spider Spider may be done. Twin Vortex is the card he's been waiting for. With that, he could destroy Uru, but Mausoleum will pay 2k. And he summons Uru because he has more than just one. And that Uru is going to bring Jacob down to 8,000 life points. Okay, well, the good news is his opponent is down to 8,000. The bad news is his opponent can heal so much that even a 3,000 attack direct attacking monster doesn't make a difference. Also, he just destroyed Grand Core, so he killed himself. By destroying the Grand Core, he literally played himself. That Lair Wire has been, is his grave now. That Lair Wire has decided that he lost. Alright, that's going to be the end for our buddy Roman here. He at least tried, but he did not try. Oh my, oh, it was over. Oh, it was over a long time ago, apparently. I just didn't realize it. So 3,000 attack goes in, which will weaken the opponent's monster, but he's going to heal right back up, which means that the freaking, what is this guy called again? It's a Mech Lord Emperor, but it's Grinnell. Grinnell is going to be able to destroy him by battle. And the second Grinnell destroys him by battle, the duel's over. Plus, he's he's got too much heal, man. You need Heavy Storm or you're going to lose this anyway. Grinnell top is going to negate your effect, apparently. I didn't even know he could do that. That's pretty impressive. 3,500 attack goes in. Mirror Force goes in to stop it. Mirror Force will stop it. And now it doesn't matter. Okay, hold up. That doesn't matter now. Roman could still win this duel. With 3,000 damage, it's not enough, actually. He's just going to heal back 3,000. Oh, my God. Roman, he heals 3,000 every turn. Jacob heals 3,000 every turn. Holy crap, that's amazing. The ability to heal as much as a freaking Blue Eyes or an Uru is way too goddamn much. That shouldn't even be legal. And Solemn Wishes just... I'll, I'll fast forward the healing part. And here we go. We got Fire Ant Ascator dying yet again. That's pretty brutal. And we got Goki Pawn in attack mode, which is, means is he trying to lose the duel? Wait, is he trying to lose now? He gave up? Alright, get past the healing part. Yep, Jacob's deck. I didn't realize he had this stall combo actually work. Never has it ever made a duel last this long. Gokipon, he wanted to have died to get his ultimate insect. That is a pretty... Actually, that's a really good card for his deck. However, he actually needs to level it up for it to matter. And it's not leveling up this turn. So, why would you crash? That makes no sense. Why would you crash with the giant rat? I mean, yes, it thins out your opponent's deck, but now he's got a core. And now if he kills that core, you lose the duel. Which, honestly, he can kill it whenever he feels like it. Once, oh wait, he filled up his back row, so he has to kill it some other way, but whatever. Relinquish Spider is here. Relinquish Spider's effect will activate to get... Why would you do that? Why would you do... Why would you... Can he not read the card? I know Yu-Gi-Oh! players don't read, but this is AI. Does the AI not know that it's it's signing its own death? That's the second time. That's the second time. He's just decided. Oh, hi, Mother Spider. Good to see you. Hi, Insect Imitation. Good to see you. I don't think it matters. Hi, Ultimate Insect Level 7. Good to see you. I don't... I don't know what to say. That was just... Why? I mean, I'm glad he summoned Ultimate Insect Level 7. That's cool. But you know what would have been cooler is not doing everything before th uh, before that happened. And now you lose your monster and you lost the duel. That's a game. All right. Thank God. Let's get rid of him. Roman Godwin is out of here. His deck can't beat the freaking power of Jacobs, but maybe Crow can. Maybe someone that actually destroys spells and traps can. So the next duel is going to be Dvac, our favorite guy who uses an ape deck. His ape deck has been buffed quite a bit, so he can actually summon his Synchro a lot more easily, and so he can get his Earthbound Immortal a lot more easily. So let's see how it, it goes. Let's see here. There are no DQs. I don't think I've ever DQ'd a character, and I don't plan on doing it now. Now let's see here. Plus, his idea worked. That takes a lot to make that stall work, and it worked. Because you have to have those four cards just to, or, Hell, he has to have those three cards just to make it worthwhile. So I don't think it's a really good stall at all. I think that was a terrible stall. His opponent just happened to be very slow. <clears throat> if he was fighting even a semi-fast duelist, that would have killed him. Welcome, Sorith. Now let's see Jean. 
So we already know Jean's new unicorn deck is really good. He took down Officer Trudge, who had Goyo Guardian up against him. But uh, can he take down the guy with all the apes? He's got that monkey Earthbound Immortal, which is really strong. But we'll see. We'll see if we get to see it today. Let me get some water in me. <clears throat> so looking at these characters, I'm going to say Jean should win. Jean should actually win this one. Welcome, Creative Gaming. Happy to have you here. He threw away his Earthbound Immortal. That's pretty interesting. Beast Striker can actually summon Moja. He summons Moja by throwing away Moja. And he's going to attack the Mind Mole, but not destroy the Mind Mole. All right, Dvac, you at least have a good monster on the field in Beast Striker. Your opponent, on the other hand, has Trident Warrior, and Trident Warrior can get him a level 3 tutor monster, which he does not use for Synchro. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm losing my voice just a little bit. I was recording Mega Man earlier. So, I would go after the tuner monster, but you didn't for some reason. Okay. He didn't use the... Okay, now you're... you're both of you are playing very strangely. Are you not going to use your tuner monster to summon it? I, I don't think you have a level 6 synchro, to be fair, but still. X Saber Arabellum is a good card. Why didn't you put my... Why didn't you put my mole in attack? What? I don't... I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I honestly couldn't explain it to you. I have no idea what's happening right now. I, I, don't, I don't think we're watching a duel anymore. I don't think any of these duels... Uh, I mean, we've had some good ones, but... I don't think any of these duels have been duels. What, what's, what's, uh, what's up with you? What's going on with the brain of yours? Can we fix it? Like, Jean played completely fine against Trudge. He actually played well against Trudge. But against Dvac, he just turns off the brain really hard. All right, yeah, okay, at least he's drawing two cards and he's refilling his deck, so that's nice. Mm, okay, swords, that's nice. He at least bought himself a swords. That's the good news. Okay. We got close forest, that's a good card. That'll help buff his monster since he has so many in the graveyard. Heavy Storm is a really bad play when you were really reliant on that Swords. John has actually decided to lose the duel. Like, he he chose death. Like, this was a choice. This L was a choice. Oh, well, actually, he has this monster. Oh, well, shit. All right, well, that actually keeps him safe then. Never mind. John is not losing yet. Not just yet, but I'm not exactly happy. That he's not losing. <laughs> I'm, I'm still upset. But that was a good play by Jean. But the Heavy Storm wasn't. That was completely stupid. And Mojo will do its 100 damage. Okay, so he's got Nimble Momonga. That's very nice. That saved his life points. But what hand could he possibly have to save him? Lock Cat? Okay, Lock Cat gets you Key Mouse. I don't think you run a level 4 Synchro, my friend. Yeah, I don't think you run a level 4 Synchro. And Horn of the Phantom Beast, you can't even beat the Ape Magician. The Ape Magician has defeated you, and he gets to draw a card. Okay. And Terraform, okay, well, just end the duel. The duel's over. However, the Moja's just ta Oh no, the Moja's not taking up space. He got King of Beasts. The King of the Beasts is here, everybody. And with the Closed Forest, that will end this duel. Oh, so thank you. Thank you, God. Just end the duel. Oh my God. That Yes. Yes, we can end this. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. That was one of the worst plays I've seen by Jean in a long time. Dvac didn't play that well either for a little bit. But he at least played better than Jean. So now we got the King of Beasts here. And we win the duel with it. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly. The Leomon attack King of Beasts. Perfect. Or Beast King of Beasts. So there we go. Dvac will be moving forward. I don't think I want to see Jean anymore. The next duel will be Jack Atlas versus Neo Jinbei. Now, Jackie Boy might actually find some trouble with Neo Jinbei because, because of the way Jinbei's deck works. So this is kind of an unlucky bracket. However, Jack is my boy and he will not lose. This man, two tournaments ago, summoned his uh, Nova Dragon, his Red Nova Dragon. 
So I want to believe in him. I want to believe he could take down just about anybody. And this guy is part of the anybody. Alright, let's go ahead and check this out. Yeah, Jack Atlas, the Speed King. He's not former nothing. He's too good. Let's see if he could take out part of Team Tayo. Now, today we already saw Team Tayo fight Yusei. Funny enough, Team Fighties and Team Tayo are going at it. Random Gamer, thank you so much for the 20 bucks. My favorite Siner Dragon out of all of them? Maybe Black Rose Dragon. That card is really good looking. Stardust is cool. Red Dragon Archfiend is terrifying. But Black Rose Dragon is legitimately awesome. Ojama Blue will be destroyed only to allow his opponent to draw two more Ojamas. Good job. Jinbei is in a position where if he can get his field spell, he can put his opponent in a bad position. He got himself Uniflora, the mystical beast of the forest. Uniflora is going to go ahead and destroy the Archfiend card. Again, though, Random Gamer, thank you so much for the 20. I really do appreciate that. And Dark Resonator is here to destroy Uniflora. Oh, wait, we might have a Synchro Summon or just go for damage on it. I would just go for damage. Yeah, just go for damage. And then Synchro Summon. I've seen the I've seen the Ghost Rare. In fact, one of my friends has a Ghost Rare. Alright, Dark Highlander, there you go. <clears throat> there you go. And Polymerization, everybody! Are you ready for not Ojama Knight, but Ojama King? Alright, Ojama time, it's here. Ojama King will lock off most of the places. Ojama Dala will summon the Ojamas back. So we have Ojama Green, we got Ojama Yellow, we got Ojama Black, and that's about it. <laughs> but we got the King holding back the Speed King, and we got ourselves Dark Resonator, but these cards cannot destroy Ojama. Ojama's just too damn good. And if he gets his Field Spell, he's going to turn this whole duel around, but without the Field Spell, he can't do anything. Destiny Draw kicks in, Destiny Draw will be nothing. Alright, interesting. No Ojama muscle yet. He legitimately tribute. Oh my god, that was a good play. I hate it, but that was a really good play by Jack. Oh crap, he summoned Red Dragon Archfiend. That was super smart, because it destroys all of these cards. Yes, Ojama King has enough defense, but Jack doesn't care about your defense. He has an effect that is meant to destroy defense mode monsters. Ojama Dala can try to do its job again, but it will not matter. It's just building up a defense that doesn't last. That was a really great play from Jack, and Jinbei doesn't know how to deal with it. In fact, by playing these monsters in defense mode, he's proving that he doesn't know how to deal with it. Resonator Call will get him another card. Okay, Clock Resonator is just fine. Clock Resonator, or Flare Resonator is just fine too. Uh, go ahead and let that card blow up the field. There we go. And Flare Resonator, go ahead and do some damage. This duel is super over. I actually don't know how Jinbei comes back after losing literally everything twice. I can't think of a way. So, Jack's going to go ahead and draw a card. He's got Clock Resonator. That's a beautiful card. And Ojama Green will bite the dust. Red Dragon Archfiend, do your job. Granted, Jinbei will survive yet another turn. All because he didn't get Ojama Country. If he had Ojama Country earlier, he would have wrecked Jack Atlas before Red Dragon Archfiend had a chance to be summoned. And even then, you'd be in attack mode. Dragon Arch uh, Dra Red Dragon Archfiend would have been countered. But at the end of the... Oh, we got Red Carpet. Okay, let's put in some more monsters. We got uh, all the Resonators you could ever want. All the Resonators have joined the battlefield, everybody. This is going to be pretty good. So I'm going to sit up. And we're going to watch this together. Jack Atlas does piercing damage. Jack Atlas wins the duel. That is a four Resonator Red Dra Dragon Archfiend destruction monster. He did good. My boy Jack is moving forward. Hey, cool. We're going to have a Signer versus a Dark Signer in the next round. In the next round. So, the next fight is going to be Andre with a completely new deck. Andre's new deck is going to be a little surprising because it's actually made of some older cards rather than newer cards. Granted, he got to keep his unicorns, but it's definitely a new deck. It's going gonna, it's gonna to throw people off for sure. Um... And his new deck is going to be going up against Zone. Ooh, what a tough opponent. That is a super unlucky opponent to go up against. Very, very unlucky. Now, let's see here. I need Zone. Granted, Zone could brick or play poorly like he's known to do. But with Andre's new deck, I don't know if he's going to want to fight somebody that literally counters battle. We'll see.
So, to open this duel, Aporia is just going to set, set, set. Very nice. And we got Pot of Greed from Andre. That's completely fine. Team Unicorn is going to start the duel with a Polymerization. That Polymerization is going to summon Gazelle, the, uh, the fly, or Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast, and TT will hit it. But he hasn't normal summoned yet. And he still gets to special summon Gazelle, the uh, Mythical Beast. And he's got X Saber Air Bellum, which if he wants to Synchro Summon, he has the option. However, Call of the Haunted will bring back Mech Lord Army Granel. And he's not going to be able to beat that, so he's going to Synchro Summon. And with that, he gets his Voltic Bicorn, which can hold back Granel. So at least he has that. I would have Synchroed ahead of time, but it's not his fault. So, good start from Andre, good start from Aporia, uh, yeah, Aporia. I put Aporia for some reason, whoops. Yeah, this is, this is supposed to be Zone's duel. <laughs> I missed him by one. Th thank God someone said, I was enjoying that, sorry. I was just enjoying that. <laughs> oh, that's super funny. <laughs> you know what, I'm, I'm sorry, I think I wanted to watch the rest of that duel. I'm not gonna lie, that might have been a good duel. <laughs> just to see how it goes. But, uh, I was, I was wondering why his deck wasn't getting countered by Time Lords. I was like, wait, Andre's deck is pretty cool. Uh, it's, uh, we get to see some combos go off. And then the opponent's like, uh, am I even supposed to be here right now? This doesn't, this doesn't seem right. Yeah, you guys can watch me get his deck. It's over here somewhere. Let's look for Neo Andre. Look at all these Neo decks we got. All right. And we got to get Mr. Time Lord himself, so let's get Mr. Time Lord himself, which will be good. Oh, did I, wait. Oh, I guess you guys saw I was getting Neo Time. It doesn't matter. Let's just make sure I pick the right guy this time. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. Now, we got to see a little what-if scenario, and in that what-if scenario, we got a fusion summon. Which means we're never going to see a fusion summon again. I'll tell you that for free. We're never going to see a fusion summon. Granted, he has 11 extra decks, so he has way more than just that. And the Priestess hits the field, but he does not use its effect, which is a really bad idea. And he starts off with his Fire Formation Tenki to get Vivid Knight. Very good start for Andre. Andre gets Phantom Beast, and God says no. And there we go. His Phantom Beast monster will die, but Premature Burial says, Screw your god. I have, I have Premature Burial. And now my monster goes in and does Piercing Damage for 18 and puts uh, Zone in a very bad situation. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad, Andre. Good start to put your opponent at 2200. So, Dusty Draw kicks in. He's going to limit reverse the Angel. Hopefully, he actually uses its effect this time. He uses his effect this time. And he can choose whatever the hell he wants. His choice shall be... Uh, Sandy. Sandy's going to destroy the monster and do 2000 burn, which is really good. So, let's see if he can destroy Sand. I don't think Andre's Phantom Beast can do anything. I do know that, that there are new Phantom Beast support, which is really cool. Which is all not why we have a Phantom Beast deck on the field today. We just happened to make that deck ahead of time. Uh, we got Michi coming out. Michi's a, a very problematic Time Lord. That Time Lord's going to take away half of his life points. Very bad for our buddy Andre. But Andre, maybe he can top deck a monster to save himself. Something to combo. Just a defensive monster. He realizes he can't get through Time Lords. He has to wait for his opponent to run out of Time Lords. And his opponent has run out. This is Andre's only chance to win the duel. Literally, you only get one, and it's right now. Call the Haunted will bring back Wildhorn, the Phantom Beast. And is he going to go in? He's going to go in. 1,800 damage goes in. However, the High Priestess will stop the attack and do burn. However, he's got one more monster, and Horde of the Phantom Beast! The Phantom Beast monsters go in for game! Andre takes the W with his Phantom Beast deck. So yes, Andre's new deck will be a Phantom Beast deck. I decided to give him that deck after I realized that the trap card they all use is called Horn of the Phantom Beast. So I said, screw it. The next duel is going to be Rally and Rally's brand new deck, which I am unbelievably excited to show you guys because it's going to blow your minds. Rally's new deck is going to be a lot of fun, if Rally could play it properly. And Rally's going to be going up against Lester the Unlikely, of course. I should have guessed. Now, while you have a chance, everyone take a guess at what Rally's deck is. If you're right, I'll be very proud of you. If you're wrong, I don't care. He did not use Phantom Beast in the anime. This is a Neo deck. Because we already have three people using Unicorn decks, I took one away and gave him Phantom Beast. The other two still have Unicorn decks. 
Something rocket related? Sadly, no. But she, uh, they, sorry, he still has his rocket card. Obviously, I wouldn't take away the card. Yep, two red-headed runts are going to be fighting each other today. Let's see which one of these boys is stronger. We already have a, 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 what is that, a monkey duelist, so no. It will not be a Karibo deck either. This game does not have a lot of Karibos in it. We already have a junk deck, technically, you say. We got Flamebill Grunika. Do not get your hopes up on that, though. Runika's going to do 200 burn, and we got some back row. And Mechlord Emperor Skeel is going to come out for Twin Vortex. That's really good. And there we go. Limit Reverse is going to bring back Mechlord Emperor Skeel. And that's about it, so that's not great. The next card coming out is Mass Dragon. That's pretty good from uh, Rally. Rally's Mass Dragon is going to help out quite a bit, doing 1,400 damage. It's not just a fire deck. Definitely not one of those. It definitely has a boss monster and a boss focus, but you're just not seeing it yet because Rally hasn't drawn it. Looks like Lester is playing very passively with his deck, so maybe this is your chance. We got another Flameville Granuka. It's there just for, you know, just for some support. Rally needed more monsters, so Flameville Granuka just fit the bill. It's not Flameville's, that's for sure. It's not Frost and Flame Dragon, that's for sure. No Volcanic deck, we already have a Volcanic user. The whole point of Neo decks is just to have something new show up. And make your appearance, Turbo Rocket. Cool. And we got ourselves a Synchro Summon for something that does go off the deck. Everyone say hello to Metaphys Horus. It's not a Fire Dragon. I mean, yeah, it has Fire Support, but it's not a Fire Dragon deck. And there we go. It is Horus. Rally's deck is going to be a Horus deck from now on. Granted, Rally's not really drawing any Horus cards except that one. And there goes the Skill Guard, and there goes 1600 damage with Horus, and there goes 1400 damage with Mass Dragon. Pretty good damage so far. Granted, even with this Horus deck, uh, Rally has a lot of Synchro support. She has a Horus Synchro Monster, or he has a Horus Synchro Monster, uh, level 8 or 10, I don't remember. A really strong Synchro Monster, and um, something else as well. Oh, win by burn. Okay, oh wait, sorry. One by burn. There we go. Rally won by burn, so I couldn't even go through all the stuff. Maybe we'll see it today. We didn't get to see Horus level 6 or level 8, sadly, but maybe next fight. Maybe next fight. The next duel is going to be Brio versus Yusei Fudo. Okay. Brio and Yusei Fudo should be a good duel. Now, when it comes to these duelists, Brio is using a deck that he used to get to the World Tournament with a little bit of buffs for the Neo Tournament. But we'll see what happens. Neo Decree is not in Rally's deck, no. It's not a it's not a negate deck or a no Yu-Gi-Oh deck. It is a Horus deck. Simple as that. Brio, Brio, Brio. There we go, Neo Brio. And I need good old Yusei. Everyone's fan favorite character. Like the guy from GX, exactly, except, you know, better, because he has synchro support. Including Turbo Rocket, which does have, still can summon Turbo Cannon. Because there are level 1 monsters in, um, in, uh, what's, uh, Rally's deck. Yeah, we don't really do no Yu-Gi-Oh decks. There are, there are, si there are single cards in this game where it says no Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, people run Jinzo, people run Horus, people run Royal Decree, but no one has all of that. And no, people run Dark Sigmorph in the, in these tournaments. But no one has all of it. We don't want the duels to be no Yu-Gi-Oh completely. That would be completely... Uh, that would just be new Yu-Gi-Oh. And we don't need that. I have no memory of who the person was, but I do remember him dueling. Alright, so there we go. Yusei has a pretty good start. Neo Brio is going to summon the Voltic Kong. Voltic Kong is going to go in, but cannot destroy the uh, Debris Dragon. I'm afraid it was not Truman. It was actually a duelist at the school. At least from my memory, I remember it being a duelist at the school. We got X Saber Air Bellum, and with that, we're going to go ahead and get out the Voltic Bicorn, which is his favorite card, Neo Brio. And Call of the Haunted will bring back the Voltic Kong, so we got the Voltic Combo. The Voltic Combo is going to go into a Mirror Force, but I think that works with the Neo. Yeah, I think you fell into his strategy. He wanted you to destroy him because he is a deck out deck. Granted, he doesn't have any trap cards, which is really bad. <laughs> 
It is really bad that he has no traps. And by throwing away monsters, all you did was help out uh, Yusei Fudo. So this might have been a mistake. And level 5, okay. Yeah, this might have made a mistake by Brio to throw away all those cards. And now he made himself level 3, so he's being an idiot. Good, good. Could have could have gone higher level, decided not to. Armory arm is going to do that for some unknown reason. I I don't know. I don't I don't think I can explain uh Yusei Fudo's addiction to summoning armory arm. I still let him keep it because there are situations where he has literally nothing else he can synchro summon. But he shouldn't be making situations to summon it. Alright, we got X Saber Arabellum, which can at least do some damage, which I guess is nice, but what you really need is some back row, Brio. And Brio does not receive any back row, which means Yusei Fudo might defeat him next turn. This duel could be over. Yusei Fudo has an Air Debris Dragon, and Debris Dragon's effect brings back a. Oh, Jesus Christ. Excel Synchro is going for another Synchro Summon. This one's going to be level 7, though. And it's. Oh, wait, that was level 8? I must not have noticed the levels. Oh, he was at level 5, not a level 4. And Shooting Star! Okay, yeah, just end the duel. Just end the duel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go, everybody. We're good. Well, you say Fudo's better than Team Unicorn. We could prove that. That's fine. The only member of Team Unicorn to survive is the only one not using a Unicorn deck. Granted, it has Unicorn cards in it, but he's using a Phantom Beast deck. So the only Unicorn member uh, left is using Phantom Beast. Which I guess a Unicorn would be a Phantom Beast, huh? Or a Pegasus, something like that. The next duel is going to be Yusei Fudo. Oh, sorry. Sayer. Sayer. Oh, God. Sayer. All right. We got Psychic uh, Cult Leader Sayer taking on Herald of Team Ragnarok. Okay. Odin is coming out to play. And Sayer's Psychic deck is coming out to play. A lot of support for these people. There's going to be a lot of support for these characters. So get ready. These decks should never break. They should actually play really well. Alright, Team Ragnarok's Herald. He was always a cool character. He seemed like a cool customer. I just gotta find him. Uh, I found him. Alright, we're ready to go. Time for Nordic Gods to take on Psychic Bastard. He's using his psychic powers to brutalize people. And honestly, he killed some people too. So yeah, this is not good. So, looking at this, Harold is going to go for a set. Nothing wrong with that, but he should have some back row. And Sayer's going to start the duel with some draw power. That power will get him Assault Beast. Assault Beast is going to go in and destroy Valkyria of the Nordic Ascent, which this sucks for him because he needs that for his Tuner Monster, or his Synchro Monster. He needs that for Odin. He loves his Valkyrie. And he has two level 3 monsters, which means all he needs is a level 4. Yeah, no. He needs a lot more. And he summons Overdrive Teleporter, but God says no. We're seeing a lot of that today. Too bad there's no emo for it, but God says no. Unless you two members do have that, I don't know. Well, this guy's gonna go into attack mode, special summon Garm. Bloody Garm. And with these monsters on the field... Oh, he's gonna do it again, and he's gonna summon Garm. Now if he gets his level 2 monster, he can act... Oh, he's got an equip spell. Inter oh, he's got two equip spells. Interesting. If he had his tuner monster, he could out... Never mind. He could have summoned his uh, Odin. All he needs is Odin. And Psychic Snow comes out, but it can't beat Garm. However, he did get it! Okay, with the Valkyrie, we're going to see Odin today. We did not get to see Loki, but Odin, the father of the Aesir, is here. And he's here to do some battling. A Odin's effect will activate. He's going after Sayer's life points. Sayer is in a lot of trouble. This is going to be really, really bad. And Call of the Haunted comes in. The Valkyries don't exist in this game, and ne neither do Iron Hans. Sorry, Batbrand, they would have already been in the tournaments if they did exist in this game. And Overdrive pays 2,000 life points to do what exactly? He special summons Psy- okay. And Psychic Commander. And he's going for a level 6 Synchro Summon. It better be a good one. He's got Psychic Nightmare. One of these things got to beat Odin. He's going to activate Psychic Nightmare's effect. He's saying it's a trap card. It's a spell card! That's not going to work out in your favor. We got an emergency teleport. He realizes he messed up. Wait a minute. That monster's busted. It's the psychic jumper. Is he going to steal Odin? He's allowed to steal Odin and he's got psychic sword. Oh no, Odin. 
You've been betrayed! Oh, wait, why didn't you attack with the guy with Psychic Sword first? It doesn't... Well, it did matter, but whatever. The damage is super good. Sayer is playing like a goddamn champion right now. That is an amazing play. He lost everything. We know the only card in his hand is the Nordic Lights. Odin is sitting there like, my son, you will die. And Podigree kicks in. Odin has been betrayed. Or no, wait, Harold has been betrayed by Odin. That is pretty brutal. Psychic Nightmare will guess monster card. He guessed right. It's freaking Yomengonder. Oh my god. All right. The Nordic monster cannot be destroyed. Luckily, he's still alive. Oh, well, actually, if you had just done the... Oh, maybe you can't do it to a face down. You gave him the Psychic Nightmare, which he probably appreciates now that you left a monster in attack... Why would you leave that monster in attack mode? Wait a minute. You just lost. Why would you leave... Why? Why would you do that? That was so dumb. You wait till your next turn to do that. Okay, whatever. The winner is Sayer, the Psychic Man. Or, I mean, it's Odin, uh, Harold, the Odin Man. Sorry. Harold wins. That was terrible. I got confused because the Psychic Monster won the duel, but it was literally the other way around. It doesn't matter. Odin wins without Odin. He doesn't need Odin. No one needs Odin. Odin's just an asshole. All right, the next duel is going to be Dragon. Okay, so we get to see Thor now. Well, hopefully we get to see Thor. No Loki today, but we got to see Odin, and Thor's coming out next. Alright. But he's going up against our new character, Ransborg, so we'll see. We shall see if he actually gets to summon it. Ransborg, I don't remember how well he won his first duel, but he won his first duel, so here, here we go. This will be a real good test for him. If he can beat a freaking, uh, if he can beat a... Aesir, then he can win anything. He can win the tournament. I'm actually just hyping him up. I don't think he can win the tournament. I think a Mass Knight deck is just okay. There are good uses of it, but I don't know if the AI is good enough to use it. Nope, Ransborg does not use Silent Swordsman. He only does that in video games that don't have Mass Knight. In the show, he uses Mass Knight. And Warrior Lady of the Wasteland shall be destroyed, which lets him summon the Mass Knight level 3. Mass Knight level 3 will be able to evolve. Please, AI, don't be stupid. Yay! The Mass Knight level 3 evolves into Mass Knight level 5. And Call of the Haunted will bring back Mass Knight level 3. So now he has both monsters. He's going to use Mass Knight level 3's effect to summon Mass Knight level 5. I didn't even know you could do that combo. That's crazy. All right, and we got Trident Warrior just for fun. God says no to Trident Warrior, but should be a little careful when your opponent runs a burn deck. And we got Nordic Relic blah, blah, blah. And that made it so he was stronger. That's bad, but he could still burn. Yes, Mass Knight level 5 does a thousand burns, so that's pretty brutal. All right, Mass Knight level 5 does do a thousand burn. And it's not even final. Oh, are we going to see the final form today? Do we get to see Mass Knight level 7? Please, God, do it. Yes, we're going to see it. Boss Monster is here. Mass Knight level 7. Its effect says it does 1,500 burn. That's just what it does. Every turn, it does 1,500 burn. And he's got Marauding Captain, but God said no to Marauding Captain. So next turn, he wins, guaranteed, with Mass Knight level 7, because every turn, it does 1,500. That's its effect. <laughs> it's literally his effect is I win the duel do it I win the duel mass knight level 7 boom all right there we go Ransborg's new and his boss monster win the duel thanks to its burn effect you should not use God against Ransborg the Knights do not care about your gods all right Ransborg has slayed the dragon funny enough <laughs> The next duel is going to be Hunter Pace with his Neo deck. That should be pretty good. All right. Hunter Pace, Hunter Pace. Now, Hunter Pace has a very upgraded uh, zombie deck for him. It's not going to be just his basic stuff. He's got a lot more support in it now. And honestly, he, should, he might become a speed king again with this kind of a deck. But we'll see. And he's taking on Mina. Mina's deck is really good, though. This deck that Mina is using is the deck that got her second place in the World Tournament. Literally getting second in the World Tournament is one of the hardest things to pull off in this game. Or in our AI tournaments. But she did it. Either way, let's see what happens. We got Hunter Pace and his speedy Neo deck versus this gal. This gal. 
No, no, no. I'm not going to do a zombie world theme. No one wants that. Zombie world's too good. All right, he's using zombie world. Obviously, it's a zombie world theme. Of course, I need him to be better. Assault beast shall be summoned and Hecatrice shall die. We already have an ally of Justice user, and we already have a uh, Jack Atlas, so we don't need a ghost of Jack Atlas. That's that's fine. We don't need him. He's not important enough to matter. And her monster is way better. So, let's see what he ends up doing, knowing that he has to take down such a strong monster. And he's going to put Mizuki. Mizuki is going to be very helpful. However, Dark Lord Desire has hit the field. These Dark Lord cards are pretty scary. He's going to set another monster and play passively, not even using Mizuki just yet, which means he has um, he has a plan. Pyramid Turtle could summon his boss monster. That's his mini boss. Well, one of his boss monsters. There's Skull Flame. Pretty good card. It's not going to be able to beat Dark Lord Desire, but it could try. And he goes after that card. Mirror Force says no. Damn, he's losing everything. All right, he still has a defense monster, so that's good. And Morphing Jar is really good. Let's see what happens. Yes, she has Christia. Uh, Mausoleum of the Emperor will be used. Mausoleum of the Emperor has been activated to summon Dark Lord Superbia. And MST will get rid of whatever trap he's been holding back. And I don't even know what that is. Pyramid Turtle will be destroyed, which means he can at least summon something powerful. Skull Flame will also die. And Morphing Jar goes in for 700. Damn it, her deck is just too damn powerful. He's in a bad situation. However, he's got Book of Life to try and help him out by getting back uh, Skull Flame, which will do damage. And we got Pyramid of Wonders to buff it. He's got double Pyramid of Wonders. His Skull Flame is stronger than her by a lot now. He's at 3,800 attack. Holy crap. All right, with this, he could actually win the duel because she's known for her attack stat. Without her attack stat, she's nothing. However, she gets out Dark Lord Asmodeus. Asmodeus is going to use its effect to go in, negating everything on the field, but Mirror Force, and Mirror Force will save his life. Asmodeus will get a token, though. And two tokens, damn. Swords will come out, though, to block him off. So, she bought herself some turns thanks to Swords, and he needs to get some more cards on the field. Skull Flame is nice, but you might need some more options in case she Tribute Summons again. The Pyramid of Wonders is the only thing keeping him in this duel. Monster Reborn brings back Dark Lord Superbia. She's building up her field. Dark Lord Superbia brings back Athena. She could try to win by burn. Athena's effect will go ahead and bring back Dark Lord Superbia. And Athena is going to start doing its burn effect. And Dark Lord Superbia uses its effect to summon Hecatrice, which means Athena will do a double effect, doing 1,200 burn in one turn. Really good play from, uh, from Mina. She has ways to win by burn as well. Which means after that Swords runs out, he... Oh, okay, luckily for him, she has too many monsters on the field, so she can't keep doing this. Athena's gonna... Oh, he could... I mean... He could... He, she could do it at once, but she can't get 1,200 burn every turn. Which she should have been able to do. Now, what are you gonna do about it? You have a set card, okay. Hopefully, it's actually good. I, I really do hope for you, um, Mr. Speed King, because... Yeah, the burn damage is gonna be annoying. Athena will continue to do its burn. Another Dark Lord Superbia hits the field. Athena will uh, do 600 burn. But with five monsters, yeah, Skull Flame has 4,600 attack. Goblin Zombie will be destroyed, but that's what he wants because now he can get a Mizuki to his hand. And with four monsters in defense mode, I think... Yeah, you need to hit that Athena because Athena is the one that's giving you so much trouble. So, Mizuki's coming out with 3,700. Plague Spreader Zombie is coming out with how much? 2,400 attack. And we got a Synchro Summon, everyone. Say hello to Doom Kaiser Dragon. That's right. He's got a Doom Kaiser Dragon now. He may not have used it in the anime, but he's using it here. And with Skull Flame backing him up, he's got a lot of damage coming in, and it looks like Mina's in a lot of trouble. Doom Kaiser Dragon destroys the opponent, and they're not left with much. Mina, you got something stronger than 4,600 attack? I don't think so. You might need... You know, if you had a Heavy Storm or a Harpy's Feather Duster, maybe. But with what you currently got, you don't got much. And Hunter Pace, just summon another monster. You, you gotta be able to destroy more than two at a time. Nope, he's just gonna destroy two at a time, and his attack points will drop with each monster dead. 
Why would you do that on main phase two when you were strong enough to do it on main phase one? That made no sense. Okay, whatever. AIs are dumb and I can't fix them. We got a tribute summon and it looks like she's going to go for some damage with Dark Lord Desire. That's her strongest one, I think. Dark Lord Desire is going to go in and destroy the opponent. Sadly, the Doom Kaiser Dragon could not stand up to Dark Lord Desire and Skull Flame will leave the field as well, which means our buddy is in trouble again. However, Call of the Haunted will make up for this by bringing back... No, it will not. I apologize. I was incorrect. <laughs> I was very wrong about that. Book of Life will make up for this. He's like, wait, you stopped my trap, then I use my spell card. And Skull Flame is eno has enough power to tie with the opponent. And Skull Flame is here as well. We got double Skull Flame coming in. Skull Flame's going after Dark Lord Desire. And that monster will die, which means Mina's about to lose the duel. And that's going to be it, everybody. That is going to be it. The new Hunter Pace could take down the second strongest character in the second world tournament. The next duel is going to be a plot duel. Wait a minute, we got an anime duel, everybody. And there is going to be a new deck for freaking Sherry LeBlanc. That's for damn sure. Her deck is the one she used in the anime, but it's all the decks she used in the anime. I'm trying to actually get her some combos for once. Instead of the deck that's pre-made for her in this game. Alright, let's go find Akiza now. Now, Akiza, this is one of the strongest opponents. This is going to be very hard for you to defeat. Good luck. And when it comes to you, uh, Sherry, this is a hard opponent as well. This should be a good duel. Both of these characters are very strong. Here we go. Neo Akiza versus Neo Sherry. Now... But if it were me, I'm going to go with Sherry LeBlanc on this one, because she got some busted cards in this deck. Granted, she has to draw them, but she has some busted cards, so I'm going with Sherry. Sherry already got one of them. It's Okole the Zone. I don't know how to pronounce it, honestly. It's the Zone card. And we got the World Tree. And we got Botanical Line, which is going to be turned into a token. And that's actually good for her. The more monsters she loses, the more tokens she builds. Double Miracle Fertilizer is a weird play, but there goes the Botanical Lion token, or Mass token. It's going to destroy the Little Trooper, which brings out Little Trooper. Echol. Is that really it? Echol? Eh. That sounds weird. Or I'm going I'm to call it the Zone Field spell. She's got the Zone Field spell. And Noble Knight Joan will be destroyed. Noble Knight Joan brings back a token at 1900 attack, just like the other one. And they're going to crash, so now there are no tokens on the field. Akiza, try to find something better. Akiza's going to Miracle Fertilizer Botanical Lion, which I can already guess is going to turn into a token. In defense mode makes no sense when you could literally attack directly this turn. Oh, well, there we go again. In defense mode makes no sense. Just go in. There's no reason to play passively when you have World Tree. And again, okay. You get it. You like tokens. Okay, calm down. Okay, we got... Oh, crap, Necrofloor is so good. This is going to be a really bad turn for Akiza. Necrofloor uses its effect to summon Sorcerer de Floor. Sorcerer de, Flo uh, de Floor's effect will be used. Sorcerer de Floor is on the... Why did you put it in defense mode? Why did you put... Why are you both putting cards in defense mode? You don't even have defense on Sorcerer de Floor. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Either way, the World Tree would have killed it, but still, you could have at least destroyed some of these tokens. Alright, Mass Token with 2k defense is gone. Are you actually going to go in now, Akiza? Foolish Burial. Sure, I don't care. Throw away a card. Now, are you going to go in, Akiza? You got three 1900 attack point monsters. There you go. There's one. The cher sure, why not the cherries? We'll take them. Give us the other two. Yep, there's two. There's three. We got them. All the monsters you could want. All she had to do was put Sorcerer de Floor in attack mode. This is her freaking deck, her freaking cards. Mass token will be destroyed. The next monster is Little Trooper. That card will save her life. Little Trooper gets out the Sacred Knight Spear Holder. And just like that, Sherry bought herself another turn. She needs another Necro de Floor. We got a Tribute Summon. Say hello to Talia. And that card has 2,900 attack. Mass token with 2,900. Hell yeah. And we got Noble Knight Joan. That's not going to help you out much in this situation. Yeah, you can crash against one, but then you're wide open. Sherry, you might lose the duel just from that play alone. If Gokiza summons another monster, the token beatdown will be too heavy. She did not summon another monster. You got lucky. 
You got lucky, Sherry. You should have lost. I'm not gonna lie. You should have lost. I do use Nucheria Cherries quite a lot, don't I? <laughs> yeah, in the 2011 series, I use them a lot. I don't know why. I just do. So, we're gonna see this. Nothing? Okay, well, it looks like uh, Sherry LeBlanc's own field spell has been used against her. Liberty at last! Never mind, there goes the only tokens they had. Lone Fire Blossom token is about to be summoned. At least they have three World Tree counters, which means, nope, they got Talia. Talia is going to be some, why is it in defense mode? Why would you put it in defense? That doesn't make sense. Like, no programming should put that in defense mode. Both of them shouldn't be doing what they've been doing. Potagree kicks in. Potagree goes and 2,900 and 500 go in. Goodbye, Sacred Night Bearer, and goodbye, some life points. All you had to do was summon a monster. You had a monster, obviously. If you summoned it, maybe you would have killed her. Nacheria Cherries uses its effect. Flora did whatever is going to activate. Apparently, the token is gone. Nacheria Cherries brings out Nacheria Cherries. Those cherries are keeping Akiza quite safe. And we have another set card. I don't think Sherry has saved her life. I think she's done. And we got a tribute summon. The summon will be a 2400 attack point monster. Dandelion's going to bring out some tokens. I don't think the sp uh, field spell does anything to token cards. Yeah, I think the tokens get to stay on the field. And the attacks go through. This is going to end the duel. Spear Holder will die. Akiza moves forward. Sherry used her deck horribly. Despite having her actual card, she does not know what she's doing. It's like watching Kallen duel. Lots of tokens in that duel. The next duel is going to be Primo of the Mech Lords taking on Dark Signer Carly and her big upgrade to make it so her deck wasn't terrible. Let's hope to God that those upgrades actually stick. I also hated that duel. I'm with you on that one, Robin. Not a big fan of a character that doesn't... Like, both characters didn't go aggressive and that made me very upset. Play your monsters in attack mode and then the token deck actually works. But you guys both played your monsters in defense mode, so it made no sense. Alright, here we go everyone. It's time for Primo to take on good old Dark Signer Carly. I'm gonna get a drink. Oh no, she's keeping her fortune ladies. We don't have another fortune lady user. And we're gonna hope that she actually uses them well today. That's our only hope, is that she can play them well. So, here we go. She's got Potagree to open up the duel, that's alright. And she has her field spell early, which is very important for her. She has this card, which is going to go away for two turns, but eventually she'll get it back. An 1800 attack point monster is pretty important. Primo doesn't have any cards he wishes to summon just yet. Future Visions brings back the monster. And that monster shall destroy Wiseau Guard number 3, even though she takes 200 burn. And then Fortune Lady Earth shall be summoned, Future Vision says get the hell out of here. But next turn, Fortune Lady Earth is going to do some massive damage. Also, Fortune Lady Earth is just Carly. Why, that character is just Carly. So it must be her boss monster that isn't the Earthbound Immortal. And that's 400 burn for the Fortune Lady. We also have Fortune Lady Water, which, take it away, we don't need it. There we go, we destroy that. I didn't even know they made Fortune Fairy Synchro Monsters. That's funny. That's sad that they made those. Uh, we got the Emperor, which is going to go away. Oh, Convert Ghost is going to kill the Field Spell, which means no Earthbound Immortal. That's brutal. Twin Vortex, he's going for his boss mon- Oh, he just stopped Earth. He didn't have his boss monster. With no Field Spell, she can't get her monster back, but she had that card to make sure she could draw two. Fortune Lady Light's going to do 200 damage. That was very sad. All right, Wiseau Carrier. There we go. He finally drew it. So this card is really good because it can stop a spell, not a trap. Oh, Convert Ghost stays on the field. I forgot. It doesn't go away. Convert Ghost will stop the trap card. And now Carly is in a lot of trouble. She lost her Mirror Force and she can't overpower this one. Oh, Swords will get negate. Oh, Convert Ghost. Okay. Well, as long as Convert Ghost is here, we got a problem. Swords has been negated. And Mr. Wiesel is going to destroy another Fortune Lady Light. And Carly's got to find some sort of combo that even I can't think of. And she ends her turn. Yep, that's not good. 2,500 damage goes in. And Carly's only got 3k life points left. Again, Brick? I don't think she's bricking at this point. I think she's just simply not summoning. Which doesn't make any sense. But AIs are going to be AIs. Her deck has a lot of monsters in it. I made sure of that. 
All right, future visions. Here we go. Convert ghost yet again. Convert ghost throws away the last monster in the grave and goodbye. However, one for one will now be activated, but Necklord Emperor will stop it. So that's two negates in one turn. So she used every option she had left and it did not matter. Primo managed to take her out. So even though she started the duel pretty well, a couple negates later and it was over. Primo ends the duel with a victory. Negates are pretty good against Akiza too. The next duel will be Odin, not the Odin we saw earlier played by Harold, but Odin from the video game, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Duel Transer. Yep, Odin is in this game, thanks to me. <laughs> um, the next, uh, and her opponent uh, will be Antinomy. That should be good. So, and Primo is like a two-time champion, so it makes sense that he won. I need Odin's deck, which Odin was a long time ago, and then I need Antinomy. Now, Antinomy, as we saw in his last duel, he can go ham. His new deck can go super ham, so hopefully he keeps that up in this in this duel against Odin, because Odin's deck is busted. They may not have used it very well, but it's busted. So, here we go, everybody. Let's get the duel started. I'm going to look for Odin's face, but it's been a very long time since I've used Odin in a tournament. Like, it's been very long. Okay, there we go. We got Odin there. It's going to be Dragons versus Tech Genis. We got TGX 300. TGX 300 is going to buff his monsters when he puts them up. And we got ourselves Mass Dragon, which is just a nice dragon card. Warwolf will die, but that's exactly what he wanted. Warwolf uh, lets him get another card to his hand, like Rush Rhino. Looking at both these characters, this duel could go either way. So he's okay. We got TG Striker for a special summon. We got Rush Rhino, which is a good, good card. But Bottomless will hit the Rush Rhino, which means TG Striker is left alone with no help. That's a really bad. Oh, Heavy Storm! TG Striker is left alone with nothing. We got our Tribute Summon for Strong Wind Dragon. Oh no, the damage is really good on this one. That's not good. If you're a fan of Intimidate, he's in a lot of trouble right now. Strong Wind Dragon is rocking a freaking 3,100 attack stat, and it does piercing. Graceful Charity is going to try and help out, but I don't know if it did. TG Metal Skeleton hits the field. I don't think that helps you at all. All right, we got another Mass Dragon to make things even worse. That monster goes in, destroys the card, and 3,100 goes in. Antinomy is almost out of the tournament. Despite having a great first duel, his opponent this time around is just way too strong for him. He needs to get a Synchro Summon. Without a Synchro Summon, he's not going to win. Alright, TG1, M1, and that's going to... What the fuck? I have never seen Antinomy use that card in my entire life. Why has Antinomy not used that card in his entire life? He owns a creature swap and has never used it. Welcome, Psycho Wolf. Well, we got a Tribute Summon for Strong Wind Dra- Oh, it's a Crash! They can go for the cra- Oh, Swords, they're not going for the Crash. They're waiting for stronger monsters. All right, well, that's not good for you. Ooh, Heavy Storm! That's good. But do you have anything else? Okay, Piercing Damage is a good idea. Oh, yeah, they can't crash. I remember they can't crash. I learned that in the in the show. If they, have the same, uh, if they have the same attack, they can't crash. Good point. But they're holding each other back then. Why would you play that in defense mode? Oh, you lost. Okay, Antinomy loses. Antinomy loses. There you go. He made a huge misplay, and that's going to cost him the duel. All he had to do was not set. <laughs> that's all he had to do. Uh, let's see here. Well, the most recent episode of that game uh, is not the most recent for me. <laughs> I'm clearly farther ahead than that. Odin, you are the winner. The next duel is going to be Neo Taro using a brand new deck not before seen in our AI tournaments versus Dark Signer Misty, which is using her reptiles, but much upgraded reptiles, trust me. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, I trust you there. It was the one with Fake Jack, but trust me, I'm way farther than that duel in the series. Way farther. We already had Ojama. That was uh, Jinbei. You might have missed that duel. This is also the final member of Team uh, Tayo. The rest of the members have lost. So the leader of Team Tayo is the last member alive. And he's got to carry the team with his new deck. Granted, like I said, these characters, since in the show, are supposed to be from an area using like bottom, 
bottom of the barrel cards. I gave them Slifer Red decks, basically. Decks that would be used by Slifer Red Duelists, so... You know, don't get your hopes up for them. But at the same time, we're still seeing new stuff. We have one with Ojama, one with Ally of uh, Darkness, which, uh... I mean, at least they have Kataster in that deck. But no, we already have an Elemental Hero user. Obviously, the Neo decks are supposed to be decks that have not been used. And here we go. It's time to start the duel. Taro versus Dark Sign or Misty. Let's see what he's got. I'm hoping for a good duel between these two, but Taro's deck is a little rough around the edge and, uh, edges. Uh, Vision Heroes is actually used by, um, what's his name? Aster Phoenix, but I don't let him use it because it's kind of bad. Reptilian Gorgon will go first, and Torapart will be killed. What a shame. It's not agents. We already have an agent user. Rose Warrior of Revenge goes in and does 200 damage. Not bad. It's not Moki Moki. We already have a Moki Moki user. You guys are naming decks we already have in the tournaments. You guys forget who participates in our tournaments? You guys forgot about Belowski? You guys forgot about freaking Katori? I think her name's Tori in the English version, but whatever. And we got ourselves Absolute Crusader. All right, that's pretty good. We got Tribute Summon. Ooh, Reptilian Medusa is going to be stronger than him. So he's... Oh, zero attack. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's going to be in some trouble here. Taro's going to go down, but he's not going down very well. Should have just crashed on that one. And we got Warrior of Zera. So there we go. That's what we're talking about. It's Zera. <laughs> Which is actually part of it. And we have Archlord Zera! He used the Copy Knight combo because it copied the name! And there we go! The Zera deck has been unlocked! Alright, Taro. He's fighting back, everybody. So, he is using a Zera deck. I didn't know he would use Copy Knight in that way. That was actually really smart to use the name of Copy Knight so he could keep the Warrior of Zera. Medusa's coming in to save the day, though. Really good play by her. Naga's coming in to save the day. Savage Coliseum's coming in to save the day. Yes, Zera has an archetype. There is um, Archlord Zera. There is Zera the Mons, and there is freaking that one Zera, the Ma Zera, whatever. It's like an evil Zera. And Naga puts him to zero attack points. Plus, there's a Synchro Zera. If you didn't know, there is a Synchro Zera. Reinforcements of the army is going to be really good. Let's see what he can get. Speak of the devil, we might get to see it. Are we going to get to see the Synchro Zera? Yes, we are, everyone. Say hello to the Synchro Zera. It's going to be Angel of Zera. Angel of Zera is here and is going in for an attack. It cannot defeat the monster, but it could put her at very low life points. And Savage Coliseum will heal him. But he lost his Angel of Zera now. He put her in an extremely dangerous situation, but at the same time, he's good. Yes, yeah, so his Zera, he has a Zera deck, for those of you that don't know. Mazera Deville, thank you, that is the card. I'm glad someone here knows what, what we're talking about. So she's going to heal 600 life points. And taro has got to figure out how to make these Zera cards work. And my, There is a Slifer Red student that uses Zera cards. That's why I made this deck, because I was like, Taro, you're a Slifer Red, basically. You guys have to use bottom of the barrel cards, so here's your bottom of the barrel cards. Field Commander Roz will put another card to the top. We got Absolute Crusader, all right. And that card is being forced to attack, but it at least gets to heal. 1600 damage puts her in the danger zone. Dark Sign or Misty is kind of scared. It, it might actually lose if she keeps playing like this. This is one of her AI's problems, but if she gets her, uh, her Earthbound Immortal, it could turn the whole duel around. Call of the Haunted will bring out the Medusa card. That also could turn the duel around just with its power. But if he draws a monster, it will end the duel. If he draws... Oh, wait, he's going to draw a monster. She, he won. Unless she has a trap card in her hand right now that could stop him or a tribute summon, he's going to win the duel because we know what he's about to draw. Granted, she's back up to 1,400 life points, but I think that's not enough. Oh, crap. It looks like we did it. Taro as the only surviving member and will continue to be the only surviving member because he's got 1,800 direct damage. Team Tayo lives. One member of Team Unicorn has survived. One member of Team Tayo has survived. One member of Team Ragnarok has survived. Only one member from each team, not counting 5Ds because they're the main characters, have survived, but they do survive. Not bad, Taro. You made a freaking Zera deck work, which I didn't think would actually do anything. But hey, it worked. His name's Taro, but he's part of Team Tayo. That is correct. 
The next duel is going to be Rex Godwin. Rex Godwin, as we all know, is going to be using his Sun and Moon Dragon and his Earthbound Immortal. I upgraded his deck, but I didn't really change it that much because honestly, his deck does do good in tournaments. He's actually consistent and it's his own deck. No one else has a deck like his. So I didn't need to make many changes for him. I still did, but I didn't have to make many. Taro was very lucky that his opponent played poorly. But uh, at the same time, you know, the fact that he pulled off a combo with Copy Knight and stuff like that, he did good. He did play make good plays at the end of the day. Which we don't always get to see. Oh, he's fighting Cheap Armstrong. I gotta find the no character. Because most of these 5Ds characters actually exist in the game, which means I don't have to make a face for them. Cheap Armstrong is not one of them. He's one I had to make a face for. Alright, there we go. And it looks like we are ready to start this duel, everybody. Let's get it going. It's time for Chief Armstrong to take on the Dark Signer Master, Rex Godwin. Also, he's not he's not just a Dark Signer, he's also a Signer, but whatever. Time to mill out Godwin, maybe. Time to see which one of these characters is a better villain. Shining Angel will start the duel. Shining Angel will fail against Giant Rat. Giant Rat's too good. Two face down cards in the back row. That kind of scares me. MST will deal with one of them at least. We're going to hit uh, Limit Reverse. Good hit. Uh, Chainsaw Insect helps him with his deck out strat. Also can just beat the crap out of your opponent. Thousand damage will be dealt. Shining Angel will special summon Shining Angel. Got to go for the stall. That makes sense. Giant Rat can do the same thing though. So you both can do this. Giant Rat's going to go ahead and do its thing. We got another Shining Angel. Do we have another Giant Rat? Are we going to... Okay, we're going to thin these decks out, everybody. No, I don't plan on putting Mr. Heartland in the tournament. Not at all. And we got Oracle of the Sun versus Giant Rat. That's right. This man still has a rat left over. So Rex Godwin is in a little bit of trouble. But he gets Fire Ant Ascator, so that's pretty good. Next is Oracle of the Sun being normal summoned. Foolish Burial is going to throw away a card. He throws away his Earthbound Immortal. And he has the combo. He can synchro. We have the Sun Dragon, everybody. This is a very dangerous monster. All right. The Sun Dragon gets bottom. It's removed from play. Because it got removed from play, he doesn't get to use its effect. It's over. Oh, no. Double Chainsaw. It's over. Chief Armstrong can't be stopped. The Sun God. More like the Sun Bot. He loses. He loses. I don't care if he has life points left. Remember, Armstrong's deck has burned. He's got that Poison Chain. He's got his Blaster Chain. He's got his uh, Iron Chain Blaster. He's got burn. Unless Godwin could do 8,000 damage right now, I don't see a comeback. Well, he could still summon Moon Dragon. I gotta give him that. Alright, he could still get the Moon Dragon Quill out here. Alright, Moon Dragon comes out, lets him draw another card. Armstrong's like, good, I'm trying to deck you out, when, even though I'm trying to beat you by battle as well. We got another Ghost Ship for Emergencies. We got another Limit Reverse. He's going for Sun Dragon. He's going to have the Sun and the Moon. It's the Kirby bosses standing side by side. There we go. God, I love Kirby. Alright, so we got those two there. Does he get his Burn card this turn? Harpy's Feather Duster will do nothing. I'm asking about your burn cards. Not seeing any burn cards. Okay. Not looking like a good... Okay, this could be a comeback. It's possible. Apoc Cartel is here, and that guy's going to destroy Chainsaw Insect. Light. Uh, the Moon Dragon's going to destroy Giant Rat, but that means he gets Iron Chain Blaster, but he can't use it! He can't use it! That's the burn card right there! That's the card that could have ended the duel! Damn it! Chief Armstrong had a chance, but it's gone. He's going to summon Chainsaw Insect, but it cannot... Oh, wait, it can end the duel. Oh, no, your monster's not strong enough. He wins the duel. Three Chainsaw Insects is all it takes. There we go. I also love Terminal Montage as much as the rest of you. That guy is awesome. That, those animations are beautiful. All the Kirby ones are his best work and the Smash ones, but... Oh, my God, they're so good. The Mario ones are good, too. All of them are good. He's a great, great, great freaking YouTuber. All right, Chief Armstrong, there we go. The next duel is going to be Bruno with his new deck versus Luna with his new deck. and I'm, Or her new deck. And I'm not going to lie. I, I predicted Luna to win the tournament because when I was putting that deck together, I was like, God damn, this is pretty damn good. 
Like, this is a pretty damn good deck. Terminal Montage. I believe that is their name. They're great. Great freaking, uh, great freaking animations. They're very funny. I enjoy them quite a bit. My friends do as well. We all watch them together. Uh, let's see here. Alright. Now I just need... Luna? Where's Luna? There's Luna. Now we need Bruno. Oh shit, Bruno's at the top. Luna is not a stall deck anymore. Her deck has completely changed. And I will say this, it's going to be pretty crazy. Uh... And Bruno's deck is completely changed too, but I don't know if it's as crazy as Luna. I literally predicted Luna to win the tournament because I think her deck is that good. Despite the fact that I've never seen it play and I don't know how the AI will use it, I think it's good enough. So, cheers. Let's see what happens. I'm hoping for something cool. Well, we got, a, uh, we got a defense monster. There we go. And we got Vylon Hept, which destroys Bellflame. Bellflame is going to go ahead and go away. And what's he going to do next? He's got Brain Control. That's good. Brain Control is going to help him out by getting that Vylon Hept and into a Tribute Summon for Gen X Ally Reliever. Not bad. Gen X Ally Reliever does 2200 damage. So, Luna, what do you got to play against that? Luna's going to play a little defensively. No back row. That's kind of weird. There we go. We got Gen X Ally with a buff. And there goes Vylon Pri Wait, Prisma? Prism. Vylon Prism. Sorry, I'm trying to figure these cards out. We have a set. Still no back row from Luna. She's getting a little unlucky, I'm not gonna lie. If she loses, I'm gonna be very disappointed. You have no idea. And we have a level 8 Synchro Summon. I don't really know Gen X cards that well. What is Axel? Axel is a 2600, 3100 beater. Not bad. And that's going to get rid of Vylon Stella. Yeah, your deck's not very good unless you get the combo with equip spells. Like, Luna's deck is an equip spell, basically. A equip spell, equip spell deck, basically. Because it combos with all the Vylons, but we'll see. Not looking good for Luna. I don't think the AI knows how to play Vylons. Hmm. Or she just got all monsters. Even all monsters isn't the worst, but still. Alright, first attack goes through, and it, it will be a Mirror Force. Do the Gen X cards stop Mirror Force? They do not stop Mirror Force. I learned that today. So, let's see. We got ourselves Vylon whatever and Vylon whatever. They will Synchro Summon into a level 7 monster. That will be Vylon Sigma. Vylon Sigma will get attached with Vylon Stella. She, does, yeah, she does not have many life points to mess with here. Vylon Sigma will get Divine Wrath! Oh, no! Oh no! Luna's wide open! Even with the combos, Divine Wrath is brutal! Gen X Ally Changer does 1200! Luna has no life points left! She needs to do something! Alright, Luna's gonna play Vylon Stigma. Vylon Stigma is gonna stick it to him. I'm getting really depressed about Luna right now. She's supposed to have more combos than this, but it's not active. She's not doing nothing. No spell cards are activating. Alright, she has another one. There we go. A level 8 Synchro Summon. Maybe this will be a little bit better. That'll be Vylon Epsilon. Epsilon's at 2800 attack. She's at 200 life points. She can't make mistakes. And she's going to pop the remote card. 2800 damage will be dealt. Bruno is down to 4k life points. Bruno just needs a monster with 200 burn or a trap with 200 burn or a spell with 200 burn. 2,800 damage goes in. Bruno's on his last possible turn. It looks like Luna found a way to come back, but can Bruno find a card that does burn? Do any Gen X cards do burn? Sparks would win the duel. He doesn't run it, but it would win the duel. And the attack goes through. It will be a mirror force, and it looks like Luna with no more monsters. She could still lose this. And we got Gen X Ally Volcanon. And we got Iron Call to bring out Remote. Volcanon and Remote are working together. And it loses to Magic Cylinder! Before he can win with Remote, it loses to Magic Cylinder. That's gonna be it. Luna just teased us a little bit. She was like, oh, you guys thought I was good. I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm just gonna make you think I was gonna lose. No, she's fine. She's fine. Holy shit, that was way too close. Alright. 
Alright, I swear those Vylon's effect looked better when I was reading them. So, we're gonna go ahead and get into the next duel. We're in round number three of our tournament, which is top 16. Or, is it? Yeah, top six. Top 16? Yeah, top 16. The top 16 characters do involve Crow, which is one of our best champions. It looks like he's actually coming back this one. And he's taking on Jacob, of course. Jacob is really good. I should know. Alright. I think Jacob's the best out of all the Mech Lord people. Like, out of all the users, he's the best one. So, let's go ahead and see if Crow could take on freaking Jacob. In my opinion, he should be able to, but shit happens. So, here we go, guys. It's time to see if Jacob's got anything up his sleeve. He's got a lot of back row, which means he might have already started with Solemn Wishes. MST's gonna pop something and hit Divergence. Okay. We got Sirocco the Dawn on the field, and Sirocco's gonna get stopped by Threatening Roar. Which is fine for Crow, because he still has a 2k beater on the field. His opponent has Mechlord Army of Grinnell, which is not strong enough to beat the monster, except it can lower the monster's attack by half, which is pretty brutal. Icarus attack says, screw your rat, and screw your Grinnell. And it looks like Jacob is out of monster, so as long as Crow has a monster, he's good. Crow does have a monster, but it's not good enough to attack with, that's super bad. And it looks like both of these people are not willing to attack, which makes no sense. Do something. Alright, we got Damascus, and we got Steam the Cloak. And we got a Synchro Summon. There we go. This is better. Arm Wing is a, a big hitter at 2300. The token brings back that. I don't think he runs a level 9 Synchro Monster. And we're going to get rid of some of that back row. Enchanted Javelin especially. Threatening Roar is gone. Is there a Jirak Duelist? A Jirak Duelist. Yes or no? Maybe not. There might not be a Jirak Duelist, but I don't know any Dino Duelists that aren't already in the game. Uh, are, aren't already in the game. So, Blizzard's gonna come out. Blizzard's gonna bring back another Tuner Monster. I would wish you had some non-Tuners to pick. That would have been better. 2300 damage goes in. 1300 damage goes in. Not bad. And 100 damage goes in. Alright, there we go. Card Trader is better when you have your stall card out, but you don't seem to have it. Might as well go all in this turn. Another Tuner Mon- What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you and Tuners? And 1300. He still has enough damage, so Crow is going to knock this guy out. Crow is showing off why he was such an amazing character for so long. By beating all of these 5Ds people into the dust. So, good job for Crow. He's moving forward. The next duel is going to be the freaking Dark Signer Dvac. This man is super strong with his 8th deck. And he's going to take on Jack Atlas. Jack Atlas is also super strong with his Red Dragon Archfiend. I am also glad Jacob lost. I don't like Mech Lords personally. If it were up to me, all the Mech Lords would not even be here. But, uh, yeah. I allowed them here for because it's the Fortune Cup. Even though they're not supposed to be in the Fortune Cup, but... Just pretend this is like the WRGP, where, but we allow, allow everybody. It makes people... It makes people more excited. Alright, so... Let me get Jack Atlas ready to go. Mm, Jackie boy, where's your deck at? There you are. You got a lot of fans you don't want to disappoint, Jack. A lot of fans. So, here we go. Jack, even though I actually do like Dvad's deck, an ape deck or a monkey deck is really fun. Uh, Jack is my boy. He's my favorite 5Ds character, so I hope he wins. A Jirak Duelist is a good idea, though. The problem is we just don't have any Dino Duelists in the anime. Like, literally, they don't really use Dino decks ever. Dino decks are, like, are underused. There are more Reptile Duelists than there are Dino Duelists. Ape Striker is gonna bring out Moja. Moja's pretty cool. I actually saw him do this play earlier against his last opponent. And Clock Resonator will save Jack if he happens to have his stuff. Mad Archfiend, if he wants to Synchro Summon, level 7 Synchro, you can get Dark Highlander. Or Chaos King Archfiend, both cards were a good choice. And he's got Powerful Rebirth, he really wants that clock back. Level 4 clock this time around with 1300 attack. Ooh, you're so special. Alright, he's gonna do 2600 damage. Oh, minus 400, there we go, 2200 damage. d -back has taken a massive hit, he's gonna need to make a comeback. He's got Poison Fangs, which is great if you're on the aggressive, but you're not on the aggressive. Oh, but you got Swords! He bought himself time. So, he's not on uh, the offensive anymore, so he's going to have to wait a little bit. But, 
what is this guy gonna do with his next few turns? He's got Beast Striker again, he's got Mojo. It's the same field as last time! That makes no sense! Roaring Earth, what is Roaring Earth? Oh, it does piercing! Roaring Earth does piercing, Poison Fangs does burn, and that trap card makes your opponent's monster get weaker. With Swords on the field, with Roaring Earth, with Poison Fangs, this is a really good combo. Tribute Summon for Vice Dragon, I guess that's alright. You know, 2,000 attacks so that he can't do the piercing anymore to weaken your Chaos King Archfiend. Not a bad play. Just don't summon a monster that he can uh, that he can use to weaken you. That's the only play thing you have to watch out for. And he... Okay. Okay, well, you summoned a monster, so now you put yourself at risk. And he's going to take advantage of that, and he's going to use his effect to 1550 burn. Roaring Earth's going to weaken you yet again. Poison Fang's going to do another 500 burn, putting Jack Atlas below half, which is starting to worry me. Jack Atlas, you're worrying me. Jack Atlas, maybe we go for a Red Dragon Archfiend. Just saying. Oh, that card does piercing. You can hit the mojo with it. And we're going for a Red Dragon Archfiend. That's what I'm talking about. This is a real monster. And red carpet, why not? Get some more synchros out here. Yeah, you got a freaking, you got a guy over there, use him. Use him for a little synchro summoning. And we got a level 7 synchro, it's gonna be Dark Highlander. So he's got Chaos King, he's got Dark Highlander, he's got Red Dragon's Archfiend. This duel looks like it's over. At 1600 attack, he could still beat the opponent thanks to his flip around effect. Dark Resonator will take care of the token. And this duel is as good, oh wait, Moja's effect. Oh, nope. This duel is as good as over. 3,000 direct damage, Dark Highlander, and the duel before Divac even gets a destiny. Wait a minute. Curse Prison to save the day. Zamon the Ape King has been summoned. Okay, wait. Divac has bought himself one draw. He gets one final draw. Make it count. That's it. That's all he's got. Jack Atlas, what would you like to do with your last turn? He's just gonna go in. Red Damon's Dragon will meet the Mirror Force. The Mirror Force says goodbye to all of them. That means Jack is wide, well not wide open, but Jack is open for his opponent. He's got Beast Striker, we already knew this. Beast Striker's going in, Creation Resonator will die, the piercing is real. Roaring Earth will activate, Poison Fangs will activate, putting Jack Atlas in a very bad position. He can't play defensively against this guy. He has to go aggressive. Powerful Rebirth is the only way. Mad Archfiend does gain 100 attack thanks to Powerful Rebirth. That 100 actually matters. The Horn of the Phantom Beast matters more. Jack Atlas is going to lose the duel. Not the boy. Not the boy. Jack, he's going to lose. The Ape deck too strong. Apes together strong. He wins. Jack Atlas gets taken out by the Dark Signer. A Signer loses to a Dark Signer. Damn. No Earthbound Immortal needed either. Really good plays by Dvac though. The next duel is going to be Andre with his brand new Phantom Beast deck taking on Rally and his brand new Horus deck. So place your bets on who you think will win. Honestly, I just want to see it in the comments or right there. I got chat right there. I can see you people. I don't always have time to look over at you because I'm doing other stuff, but I see you. I hear you too. All right, so Neo Andre and his uh, Phantom Beasts are ready. I just need Neo Rally. So, what do you like more? Do you like Phantom Beasts more? I know they just got support. Or do you like Horus more? Personally, I would use Horus over Phantom Beasts, but I like both of them. I think they're both fine in their own way. But we'll see what happens. So, we're ready to start. It's time for Andre versus Rally. Let's do it. Both of these new decks are pretty good. Which character are you guys going for? Me, personally, I'm going to go with uh, Rally. I think Rally's Horus deck will win. Molten Destruction's a hell of a start with this deck. And you got Horus at 2100 attack. Pretty brutal. This guy summons himself a Phantom Beast Crosswing and in attack mode nonetheless. That's kind of strange. We got ourselves Element Dragon getting buffed by the freaking uh, fact that there's a fire monster on the field. And there we go. Crosswing is going to go ahead and use that to draw a card. Not too good for, uh, not a good start for Rally. Now we got ourselves an X-Saber Air Bellum. We got a level 7 Synchro Summon. We already know it's going to be the Bicorn. That's right. The, Li the Voltic Bicorn is here and that monster can easily destroy a Horus level 4. Not good. 
Not good for Rally. Rally's gonna need to think of something else. Just a set. Uh oh. Pot of Greed kicks in. Pot of Greed's gonna go off, and Pot of Greed gets him Rage Battle Ox for piercing damage. UFO Turtle, that's a shit ton of piercing thanks to Molten Destruction. And UFO Turtle summons UFO Turtle to stall for time. Not looking good for Rally. Rally does have a tribute summon. It is Horus, but Horus does not gain attack points. However, Horus will not be able to... Oh, no! Trap cards still work on Horus! This is a really bad situation for Rally. The Horus deck is getting outpowered by the Phantom deck. And that's it. Bicorn will destroy Horus. And the two monsters have enough attack to end the duel. Andre and the Phantom Beast will continue. Yes, these, uh, a these are AI tournaments for those of you that are new. Alright, this is AI tournament number 110. Andre shall move forward. The next duel is Yusei Fudo versus Harold. Harold will be using Odin. Let's see if he can summon it again like he did in round two. You say Fudo, let's see if you can summon one of your scarier Stardust Dragons. One of the one of the bigger forms. So let's go ahead and get these people ready. I'm looking for Harold as we speak. Yep, this is technically a plot duel, an anime duel. Technically, pretty much any time Yusei shows up, it's an anime duel, but whatever. I mean, it's very low odds that he did not fight somebody. He fought basically everybody. So here we go, everyone. It's time for Harold versus Yusei. Like, of the 40 characters in this tournament, Yusei has probably fought 34 or 35 of them. At least 30 of them. Alright, so we got a set set pass. Pretty basic start from Harold. That's old school Yu-Gi-Oh right there. Junk Synchron is a terrible start. However, when you have Junk Servant, it's not that bad. Okay. Good combo from Yusei Fudo to get Junk Archer, throw away that card, attack directly. Granted, you might want to be careful about letting him keep cards because uh, Harold needs to build up 10 stars in order to summon his boss, so letting him keep monsters like that is a little dangerous, even though you did do a ton of damage. Glepner is going to let you get your Valkyrie, which is needed to summon your boss monster, so we'll see. Uh, Reinforced Truth, what are you going to get? Doppel Warrior is great if you have a tuner monster. We got Tuning again. He does have a Tuner Monster. Quick Draw Synchron. Let's see what he does with it. Is he going to throw away a card to summon it? Junk Archer's effect will activate. He's going to hit Valkyrie. He's going to Normal Summon Quill Bolt. Are you going to summon Quick Draw? We saw you put it in your hand. Yes, you are. All right, Quick Draw is going to be summoned. What are you going to make with it? We got another level 7 decision. And it's going to make the Nitro Warrior. That's pretty good. Nitro Warrior is going to use that, Topple Warrior's effect is going to get two Doppel tokens out, and the damage should be clean. Goodbye, Mimir. Sad to see you go. Oh, this guy gets summoned, but it's fine. Nitro Warrior can easily destroy him. And then we basically do token damage for this turn, but Yusei has five monsters on the field, so how the hell are you going to come back from this, Herald? Yes, you do get your Tuner Monster back, but what does it do? How does your Tuner Monster take down all of this? And you're going to summon Vanitas. And you got Valkyrie. And they're going to at least attempt to destroy some stuff. I can appreciate that at least. You were willing to crash your Valkyrie just to stop the damage. Mm. We got another tuning. Damn, he's good. When, he's, when, when you're that lucky, you don't even need to be good at Yu-Gi-Oh. So, Junk Synchron, what are you going to pick in the grave? What, what did he put in the grave that's level 1 or 2? Other than Quill. Oh, God said no. Never mind. God says you don't get to do that. But... Guaranteed loss now. Harold has guaranteed lost the duel. And just like that, Yusei is moving to top 8 of our tournament. Poor Harold. Poor, poor Harold. Yep, there we go. See, Random Gamers got the God Said No emote. Sadly, it's not a GIF emote because this is YouTube, but whatever. If you want to see the GIF emote, come, this, come to this Saturday's tournament. I have a brand new character showing up. At the end of the day, if you remind me, I'll tell you about uh, this Saturday's tournament. That way you know... Who are you can guess who might be showing up? All right, our brand new character to our AI tournaments is here. It's Ransborg, everybody. Ransborg from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. He did really good in his first two duels. In fact, winning by burn damage most of the time. And he's taking on the brand new Hunter Pace who managed to take out Mina. So Hunter Pace is pretty damn good as well. We'll see what happens between these two. My personal opinion, if this were the anime, I think Hunter Pace would have taken out Ransborg. So I'm going to say Hunter Pace is going to win this. 
I say Hunter Pace got this in the bag, no problem. Especially since he took out Mina. Mina, Mina was insane. And he beat her. So, he's gonna beat Ransborg. And I like that Ransborg's a new character. I wanna, I wanna hype him up. I'm not gonna hype him up here. I don't think he can win this. Either way, let's get the duel started. It's time. Ransborg versus Hunter Pace. So, Hunter Pace has pot agreed to open a duel. Very basic stuff there. Set, set, pass. He's got three sets. Good for him. And his opponent starts with A-Forces, which is good if you have a special summon. You have Trident Warrior, which could special summon. And it will special summon Marauding Captain. Weird choice, but whatever. Choose whatever you want. Pyramid Turtle is a great start for you because you can get Skull Flame. Skull Flame overpowers any monster in uh, Ransborg's deck. All right. And he's got Zombie World. They're not warriors anymore. Oh, shit. There's no lock possibility now. Zombie World changes everything. The game has changed. Pyramid Turtle combos into a Mizuki, which means the other Skull Flame's, pro uh, Skull Flame's probably in his hand. And Book of Life brings back this card to throw away Trident. I think he mostly just wanted to throw away Trident Warrior. All right, Warrior Lady of the Wasteland, what the hell are you doing here? Why would you even do that? Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me, AI? Why? All you had to do was set that monster and your life would have been just fine. So why are you doing this? It took you an awful long time to do 300 or whatever many burn. Mass Knight, do you want to do some burn while you're at it? Or are you not allowed to? Okay, whatever. You know what? Just kick his ass. Go ahead, Synchro Summon. There we go. Alright, everyone. Say hello to Doom Kaiser Dragon. Doom Kaiser Dragon uh, uses its effect. It's going to steal Mass Knight level 3. Is it going to use its burn effect? Plague Spreader is going to use his effect. Are we going to see another one of these Doom Kaisers? We're going to see another Doom Kaiser Dragon. Yeah, I don't know either, Bulba. I don't know either. He was playing really well earlier, so it's sad to see he's not playing so well this time. But... His opponent is way stronger than him. I don't bl Well, that's a great trap. <laughs> that's a great trap card, so I guess I can't truly be upset. Wait, his Mass Knight is going to evolve! Mass Knight level 7, that card beats Skull Flame! And it always does 1500! Mass Knight level 5 evolves into Mass Knight level 7 at 2900 attack! Pot of Greed comes in! He has Mass Knight level 7's effect, which he should activate at any time. It does 1500 burn for free, has no downside. 1500 burn goes out and he gets himself marauding captain which yeah you can't use your warrior stuff but whatever you got noble knight jones sure we got more knights joining the party skull flame will bite the dust noble knight jones goes in does 1600 damage and that okay hold up i thought the mass knights were done but he still has something left in the tank even if that's it all right just a set I can't believe he's fighting back. And that's another 1,500 burn. He wins next turn, guaranteed. He wins now. If the opponent doesn't have any good spells or traps to stop this. All right. Plague Spreader's dead. That's not going to stop a damn thing. That's game. That's it. Razborg is still in the tournament despite everything. I did not even think that could happen. He beat Hunter Pace. Hunter Pace's deck is way better. Holy crap. I can't believe it. All right, Ransborg, by playing very well, is still in the tournament in top eight. The next duel we're going to be going into is going to be Akiza versus Primo. Primo is known for negating a lot of stuff. And uh, Akiza is known for being the witch. Yeah. Let's see if she can use win with her witch powers, her psychic powers. However, Primo is a very good opponent. This man has won two tournaments, so... If Primo wins here, it won't be a surprise, because guess what? Akiza's never won a tournament in her life. Either way, let's get it started. Akiza versus Primo. Hey, I'm glad Hunter won his duel today, too. I'm just surprised he didn't go farther. His deck was pretty freaking busted. So, Primo's going to take on Akiza. We're going to see just what can happen here. Set, set, pass. Not a lot of action going on. 
And we got the World Tree, a great start for Akiza. She's already got Lone Fire Blossom, an amazing start by Akiza. She's gonna get herself Talaya, the Princess of Cherry Blossoms, amazing start. And Wisecore will stay alive, which means that if he gets a card to pop it, she's in trouble. So he's just gonna continue to play defensively and she's gonna need more than one monster. So, she's gonna go ahead and summon Twilight Rose Knight, which means she could have even more monsters than that. And she gets Rose Witch, which she is gonna keep it. That makes sense because she wants to get rid of all the cards on the field. I'm not even mad. Even though I want to see Black Rose Dragon as much as the next guy. I'm not even mad. Oh, shit. Akiza, you're gonna wish you summoned your Black Rose Dragon because right now you're about to face the ultimate monster. Primo's boss monster is here. He's gonna put together all five pieces of Exot of Wyzel, and these cards create a 2500 beater that could stop spell cards. Granted, that's not enough to stop Talaya, uh, Talaya over there, but who cares? The fact that she's not gonna get Ro uh, Black Rose Dragon makes me sad. All right, well, Double Rose Witch is here. That's always fun. And we're going to go ahead and go for attack, but Wise Guard will uh, redirect the attack. And then these cards are going to go in to weaken the monster. And just like that, Limit Reverse comes back. That was an amazing play, but wait, why'd you pick that one? Oh, because it could still use its effect. Okay, I yes, never mind. That makes a lot more sense. Granted, you only have 1,300 attacks, so you need to find another piece. Maybe you have one in your hand. That will help. That helps a lot. That got you Wise L attack, which gives you back your attack points. That's true, if she Synchro summons, she's screwed. I forgot that these things, entire thing is they want to Synchro. So now, he is buffed to a point where he could destroy all of her monsters, which puts her in a very bad situation. Granted, the World Tree has, now has tokens, which is very dangerous for him. So, let's see if she tries to use it. The World Tree has been attempted. It's going after that Wyzel monster. She's gonna need more than this monster. She has another Twilight Rose Knight, which... Like that people in chat said, be a little careful. Dandelion, okay, now you got my attention. And Synchro Summon for Black Rose Dragon. Granted, I don't think he could stop this. I don't think he can eat it. So she doesn't need the Synchro Solution. And now they can both go in for massive damage. Dandelion goes for three, and she goes for the rest. He does not have his monster, and now she's in, complete, she's in a great situation. Unless he summons a new one. Mystic Tomato comes in. Mystic Tomato is going to get rid of Dandelion, which is probably part of her plan, so you're going to wish she didn't do that. She's got two fluff tokens if she ever needs to tribute. She's got a Black Rose Dragon if she ever wants to beat the crap out of you. I mean, you're in a bad situation, bro. Foolish Burial is going to throw away another card. She threw away Titanial. Uh, she's going to go for a tribute summon. She still has another Talaya in her hand. And Black Rose Dragon's going to destroy your Mystic Tomato for good damage. And the next monster coming out is going to be Mystic Tomato, of course. Talaya's going to destroy that one too, and that leaves Primo with almost no life points left. It's going to put him in Destiny Draw range, while Mystic Tomato summons the core, which means if he can pop that core, he wins the duel. Like, it's like a guaranteed win if he pops that core. I don't think I could see him losing. Let's see what happens. He gets a Destiny Draw off. Can he pop the core? Mmm, no, it doesn't look like he can. That's a shame. That's a big shame. Oh, wait, Twin Vortex, pop the core! Let's get rid of it. All right. Now, oh wait, but you popped the Synchro because he couldn't target the other stuff. Yeah, he's going to wish he did not pop the Synchro, though. He, did, he didn't even summon the middle form. All right. <laughs> he didn't even summon the middle form. It's Oh, that is the middle form. Well, it's terrible. And there goes the middle form. Oh, wait, the guard said no. And there goes a piece. I guess you could do that. I don't know. I don't even care. She got rid of all of it again. Two Talayas on the field is one of the most busted things you can have. Literally protects your monsters from just about everything. Except battle damage. Uh, Nechiria Cherries joins the field as if it's going to do any damage, but, you know, screw it. It's, it exists. 3200 damage, and Akiza is going to top 8, everybody. We got a Signer in top 8. We lost Jack Atlas, but we gained Akiza. Alright, so looking at this, we actually have a plot duel in top 8. Hell, the thumbnail of this video is now in top 8. That's freaking cool. There we go. So, the next duel is going to be Odin from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Duel Transer video game for anyone that played the Wii. Taking on Taro, who had a miracle victory with his Zera deck. For those of you that have forgotten, Taro has a brand new deck because we don't allow stall decks in our tournaments. And his deck is a Zera deck because it would need to be a bad deck because he's Taro and he's part of Team Tayo. 
But he made it this far, so I kind of appreciate him now. Odin, Odin, Odin. Alright, let's go get Odin into the duel. How many people in chat have played Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Duel Transfer on the Nintendo Wii? Raise your hand. Alright, I almost have everything ready. Just give me a few more seconds. There we go. You don't own the Wii? Wasn't the Wii like one of the most popular consoles ever? Yeah, Wheelie Riders, I played that one too. I played that with four people. It was kind of funny. Well, here we go, everyone. It's Odin versus Taro. I'm going to need some time to find Odin's face, so just ignore the Zombie Master uh, persona that they're rocking right now. It's only there for a few more seconds until Odin pops up. There we go. Emulated? Okay, if you had to emulate, you had to emulate. So, let's see. We got some set cards. Reinforcements of the army kicks in. They're going for future fusion. Taro? No, Odin's going for Future Fusion. Taro's got Absolute Crusader. Absolute Crusader's going for 1,800 damage. That's pretty freaking brutal. We got ourselves a King of the Swamp to get Polymerization. The last two cards in your hand better be a Fusion. Oh, are you going to use King of the Swamp for Fusion? That would be a really good play. Trap's done to stop anything from stopping this. No, you're going for a Tribute Summon Stormwind Dragon instead. Okay, that's fine. Stormwind Dragon is going to be helpful. So, now that that happened, you're just going to have to play passively. But you don't have much time left because Future Fusion is about to kick in. Future Fusion is going to get out any monster they choose. And Odin wants the Big Boy 5 God Dragon. Remember, it's a little glitch with Future Fusion. Don't worry about that. A little graphical glitch. And Mirror Force says, go to hell. You're going to wish you saved that, Taro. Unless you could do 6,200 damage in like two turns, you're going to wish you, did, you didn't do that. Shine Knight has no damage. Oh wait, we have a level 5 Synchro summon from Taro. Level 5 Synchro is X Saber Wayne. Okay, that actually isn't a bad play. X Saber Wayne's going to uh, summon Absolute Crusader number 2. Alright, not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, she's clearly fusion summoning Cataster, of course. That wasn't a bad play. He actually might win before she gets a chance to fuse your fusion. Nope, we don't allow stall decks. And Absolute Crusader is going to go in, and that's going to end this duel. She did not make it to Future Fusion. Taro's in top eight. Team Tayo has not lost. Team Tayo will remain. I'm not going to lie. I did not expect that from the deck. If I showed you the deck list, you would be very upset that he's still in the tournament. All right, Taro, you get to move forward. Just surprise the world, why don't you? The next duel is going to be Luna with her brand new Vylon deck taking on Chief Armstrong and his uh, chain deck, iron, iron chain deck. So let's see which one of these characters is stronger. I said Luna would win the whole tournament, but honestly, the way she played her first duel, my hopes are kind of going down. But uh, I, when, looking at those cards, I thought they could do some pretty crazy combos. Maybe I was wrong. Uh, Chief Armstrong. And we're ready to start the duel. Thank you all for your patience. Let's get it going. It's time for Armstrong. This is the final battle of top 16. Armstrong takes on Luna. Winner of this goods. All the marbles. I'll throw all marbles at them. I'm actually looking for Armstrong as we speak. There we go. We got Chief Armstrong. You say Vylons really suck, but let's see if she loses first. She still has a chance. We got Poison Chain, which makes his deck a little bit better for decking out. She's going to start with Vylon Hept, and she's got her Vylon component already attached. And there we go. We got Magic Cylinder. It's going to do some burn. Unlucky start for her. Let's see what uh, good old Armstrong's got in store. She's, yep, that's a good card. And Giant Rat's also a good card, so this is going to be pretty brutal. Vylon Hept will die. Chainsaw Insect's like, hey, you can at least draw a card. Component's going to let you get a new component. There you go. And at least you thinned out your deck a little, Luna, but you lost most of your life points in one turn, so, you know, make up for that. All right, she's going to summon Vylon Stigma. Vylon Stigma is going to help him out by destroying that giant rat. I'm not thinking this is going to go too well. Even with all those cards you drew, there was no combo plays? Nothing? Okay. And Iron Chain Coil is really good. 
Iron Chain Coil is going to go ahead and buff itself to 14. Obviously, his Synchro Monster is 2600. Honest is going to make sure that she does not die this turn. Chainsaw Inset still says she gets to draw. All right, yes, his Iron Chain Dragon, his boss monster is a uh, level six. And with two uh, level four monsters, we can make a Synchro Summon of a level eight Vylon Epsilon. Vylon Epsilon is here. Vylon Prism's like, hey, I want to attach to that. Vylon Epsilon's like, well, I want to pop that. And that worked out really well. So things are turning back around. It looks like Vylon Epsilon has control of the field. A set card is nice and all, but we'll see what happens. We got Vylon Vanguard. Vylon Vanguard is going to have to deal with the giant rat problem. Giant Rat's going to summon Iron Chain Coil. Sadly, that thing will not re remain. Looks like Chief Armstrong's in a little bit of trouble here. Chief Armstrong's got Chain Dog. Chain Dog's actually not a bad card. And Magic Cylinder. Okay. That's the card she used to win her last duel, just barely, with 200 life points left. And it looks like she's about to win this. We got a level 3 summon. That's a level 7 synchro. No, it's not. Okay, there's no level 7 synchro that she wants. She just wants the damage. And the damage is good. Chief Armstrong will lose, and Luna is going to top 8. Yeah, we are existing in a slow era, so they're going to be just fine in this uh, time period. So, looking at top 8. These are the characters that matter in this 5D's Fortune Cup. Luna made it to top 8, a signer. Taro made it to top 8, part of Team Tayo, uh, leader of Team Tayo. Akiza made it to top 8, a signer. Ransborg made it to top 8, an asshole. Yusei made it to top 8, a signer. Andre made it to top 8, a member of Team Unicorn. Divac made it to top 8, a dark signer. And Crow made it to top 8, a signer. That's it, everybody. Let's get into top 8. It's going to be Crow and his Black Wings versus the Monkey deck. Literally, he uses apes and monkeys. And I hope that he can win with them. So far, Divex done really good. I'm sad that he beat Jack Atlas. Jack is my boy, but at the end of the day, if he can win, I'll be proud of him. Because we've never seen Divac win a turn. Hell, we've never seen Divac in top four. So if Divac makes it to top four today, then everything has changed. But taking on Crow is going to be very tough. Crow is the winner of the 200 character tournament. He's a very hard character to overcome. And Divax monsters aren't exactly the strongest, but Crow's monsters aren't either. He's just more tactical. He's more fast. Crow is one of the fastest duels in the game, thanks to all his special summons. And he has hand traps, which is very uncommon in these this level of dueling. Hand traps make a big difference. So, there we go. We got a set, set, set pass. Terraforming's going to get him his close force. He needs that to summon his Earthbound Immortal. He's got it on the field now. He's got himself Ape Fighter, which is a great card because it gets stronger as it uh, fights. And now it's gone. Really throwing away your Gale, though. Swords is going to protect him. That's pretty good. At least he has... Oh, no, never mind. Oh, yes, mind. Uh, he gets to keep his swords. That's always nice. Your opponent does have Zephyros, though. And he's got Oroshi, which equals a Synchro Summon. This Synchro Summon is going to make a level 5 monster, the Shining Star. I don't know what this card does. I don't think I care what it does because this guy's got swords to protect himself. Divac does not have a monster, though, and that's really, really bad. I hope that doesn't mean he drew his Earthbound Immortal. Still doesn't have a monster. Divac might be in some trouble in this top 8 duel. This is his last chance to draw a monster card, and he did not. Okay. I'm a little disappointed, but we'll see what happens. Shura is here. Zephyros is here instead. And that's a lot of damage. But Mirror Force says go to hell. But he got to keep his Shura, so now you're still in trouble, Divac. You need a monster card. Divac gets a monster not worth attacking directly with, though. And we got Sirocco coming in. Sirocco's pretty good. And goodbye, Ape Magician. All right, we got another monster. It's the Moja. Ah, that's what was in his hand. He had the King of Beasts. The King of the Beasts is here, and that monster could easily destroy Sirocco. But Kalut, the hand trap I was just talking about you, has destroyed him. So even after all of that, it did not work out. And Blizzard is here to make things just worse. And Zephyros is back. And we got two monsters that are really strong now. A monster with 23, a monster with 2k. 4,300 damage going in. Divac saves the... Oh, no, that doesn't save the day at all. You're still taking 2,800 burn, but I guess you stopped too... You stopped a little bit of damage. You stopped a little bit. Granted, if you get a tuner monster, maybe now you can synchro summon. Maybe not. I actually don't know how your synchros work out. But we'll see. Nope, just a set. Yeah, not looking good. 
You left two scapegoats left over, which means he can win the duel by attacking. Oh, never mind. He's not going to. Yes, he is going to. You lost the duel, sir. Sir, he's going to attack both of your tuner mo your token monsters. You've lost. Divac, you can't stop the king. All right, Crow, still trying to prove that he is the strongest 5Ds character, has defeated Divac. That is pretty strong. Divac, you did a lot better in your previous duels. Crow was just a little too fast for you, a little too strong for you, and your hand was a little more unlucky this time around. So... The next duel is going to be Andre, who's kind of on a miracle run for Team Unicorn. We didn't think his new Phantom Beast deck would do anything. But at the end of the day, it's actually winning him a lot of duels. So let's see what happens. Does anyone in chat believe Andre could take down Yusei Fudo? Anybody? No? Okay. Uh, it's okay. I didn't believe so either. I'm just, you know, it's kind of sad that no one believes in Andre. Even though he made it this far. No, no, it's too late now. I don't care if there's a delay. It's too late. You had to have perfect internet to answer that question. <laughs> a small chance. Alright, we'll see. Yes, he has Gazelle, of course. He has all that new Gazelle support. No, he does not. But he does have Gazelle. Let's see what happens. Junk Warrior versus... Neo Andre. Now, I've never seen the Phantom Beast go up against a really, really strong deck. Right? No, they actually did beat a good deck. Okay, but a really strong deck like Yusei. Yusei is super consistent. Even with one card left in his hand, he can make a comeback. So, let's see what happens. He's going to throw away a card, and they both set set. Okay. And we got a Graceful Charity to start the duel, which is just fine. We got ourselves a Phantom Beast Wild Horn, which does do piercing damage. And destroys the Sonic Chick. Okay. Good start by Andre. You say Fudo doesn't like that though and plays his Junk Synchron, which can combo off of the Sonic Chick. Sadly, a Synchro Summon is necessary here. Armory Arm does barely beat um, that Phantom Beast, so that is technically a good play. However, Horn of the Phantom Beast, literally a Phantom Beast now grew a horn and is going to be able to draw a card, so you say played himself. Andre is going to go ahead and get a new monster. It's going to be another Wild Horn, and he's got Premature Burial. Which means he's going to bring out his boss monster, Phantom Beast Rock Lizard. Not counting the unicorns. Um, that's his Phantom Beast boss monster right there. And he ended the duel. And turn four victory. Not not the record for the day, but that was damn fast. Yusei Fudo has lost to freaking Andre. That was unbelievably fast. I'm honestly shocked. Too shocked to get hyped about it. I'm actually kind of scared. Alright, so... Yeah, Andre's pretty good. He's going to top four. I don't think he's crow good, but he's going to top four. The next duel is going to be Ransborg, our brand new character versus Akiza. That's right, it's the duel on the thumbnail, which I didn't actually think would happen because they had to get to top eight just to fight each other. But here we go, top eight, Ransborg, the new character versus Akiza. This should be freaking good. They dueled in the anime, which was very depressing to watch, and now they're going to duel here. Personally, I don't like Ransborg in the anime, but here I do like him because his mass deck has been really fun to watch. In fact, his comeback last duel was super hype when he was taking on Hunter Pace. Alright, I'm just about ready to start the duel, guys. Thank you all for your patience. Let's go ahead and get things started. Will this happen just like the anime with Akiza winning? Or will Ransborg get revenge and slay the witch? Here we go. Ransborg's burn deck does work out since he always wants to burn a witch. Reinforcements of the army kicks in. Get some Noble Knight Joan. That card is pretty decent. Pot of Greek kicks in. Get some whatever the hell he wants. And he sets set passes. Okay, Akiza starts with Twilight Rose Knight. That's a pretty brutal start. If she has a level 4, that's a level 4. And she's going to start the duel with Black Rose Dragon. Oh, shit. That's pretty crazy. And Miracle Fertilizer's just there to be fun. Thorn of Malice does piercing damage. Thorn of Malice will make it so that does a lot of piercing. It doesn't kill the monster. He can't combo into Mass Knight level 5. Oh no! Ransborg's in trouble! Noble Knight Jones like, oh shit, I need to get in- Okay, why would he put them in attack mode though? But why though? I guess because R Black Rose Dragon's effect maybe? I don't know. Miracle Fertilizer brings back Botanical Lion at 1900 attack. Mere force ruins everything! Akiza loses everything! 
And he's gonna summon a Trident Warrior. And he's gonna exceed summon! He summons the Cosmic Hero King, Arthur! And there we go, we're in some trouble. Mirror Force, she countered him! All right, both people are can No, it's not over! The Cosmic Hero comes back. Here comes Arthur. Akiza's in a lot of trouble. Akiza can set, but she cannot win. She's in too much trouble. The Mirror Forces are gone. He still has Field Commander Roz, which can get him whatever he wants. He wants Noble Knight Joan, he wants damage. And Lord Poison is super good, because that can bring back Botanical Lion. That was a good one. But does she have a tuner in her hand? Ivy Shackles is good too. If you had your other... She does have a tuner, but does she have a level 5 Synchro? The answer is no. Then why did she play it in attack mode? To buff her monster to do extra damage, I guess. I actually... I'm trying to figure out everything out myself too. Kind of a weird play. Alright, Nechiria Cherries will die. The Cherries will at least create two more. That's the good news. And then there goes Botanical Lion. That's a big loss for her. So, Akiza, with almost nothing left in her hands, has to find a way to destroy those last two cards. She's going to top deck Lone Fire Blossom. She's going to tribute Lone Fire Blossom for Talaya. Talaya's rocking a 2800. Why are the cherries in attack? Why are the cherries in attack mode? Why? You don't have life points to spare, Akiza. You are below half right now. Why would you put the cherries in attack mode? They're there for tribute. They're there for stall. They're there for synchro when need be. But they're not there for whatever the hell you're doing right now. And we got a tribute summon. It's mass knight level 5. This one cannot do uh, its burn effect and attack. Only mass level 7 can do that. Instead, it rather just attack and do a shit ton of damage because Akiza did a very bad play. And now Akiza does 3,000 damage, or well, 700 damage, and she kept it in attack mode! She's gonna lose this to- oh wait, no she's not, okay. Weird play, but technically it saved her life. It's a bad play, but it's not the worst play because there could have been worse. It could have been worse. Alright, well, Nobunai Joan and Mass uh, and freaking Marauding Captain are here. Ransborg is still in the duel, but the duel is getting kind of intense. 2300 life points remain, and Akiza is still rocking it. He has the A-forces to buff his monsters, but can he get enough monsters? Trident Warrior, we have another one! It's King Arthur, but King Arthur isn't strong enough! It only has 2600 attack, but does it have an effect? Its effect is this! He pays 300, and he overpowers her, but he she can't be destroyed by battle. Alright. Alright. We have Twilight Rose Knight. But it does- why would you just summon it? That made no sense! You threw the duel! Akiza throws the duel! Why would you do that? There was no reason! You didn't have to summon it! The winner is Ransborg! The anime be damned! The winner is Ransborg! She kept playing monsters in attack mode! I can't tell you. I, I don't know what to tell you. She just kept doing it. Like, if she had the, if she had the level 4 monster to do a Synchro Summon, then maybe. Or level 3 for, for Splendid Rose, then maybe. But what she ended up doing was stupid. I don't know what to tell you. Alright, the next duel is going to be Taro versus Luna. The winner of this will be going to semifinals. Taro is using his Zera deck, which is as weird as Andre's deck. If Taro makes it to top four with a Zera deck, I might quit being a YouTuber. Because that is not supposed to happen. Zera decks are awful. A Slifer Red uses a Zera deck. Slifer Red students use Zera decks because they're cheap and they're easy to come by. However, Luna's using a Vylon deck, which in this series has is pretty okay. Granted, I thought it'd be better than what she's using it for, but, you know, she's trying. Either way, we'll see what happens. Will it be Luna going to fourth place, or top four, or will it be Taro? Let's find out. Here we go. Taro versus Luna. If Taro wins this, then the top four this season is just really weird. Or this tournament is just really weird. It's really weird. 
He does have Pandemonium, that is correct. Because he does run the other card. Uh, what is it called? Um, Mav uh, Zara de Maville. I don't remember its name. Deville. It's supposed to be like Devil. Alright, well, starting this duel, he's got Sanctuary in the sky. He's going to summon Marauding Captain. Marauding Captain's going to combo into Marauding... Oh, wow! Start the duel with a lock, why don't you? Oh, you ruined your own lock! Look at that! He ruined the lock! All right, well, Synchro Summon comes through. And Vylon Epsilon is back. She seems to love this monster. Vylon Prism is back to being its uh, attachment as well. Vylon Epsilon pops the Marauding Captain for pure 2800 damage. Mazera Deville, that's the one, yeah. Uh, Corella Deville. <laughs> I can't believe this du duel, man. He had the lock and he threw it away. He had everything the world could offer you and you threw it away. Well, Luna, take him out. Take him out. Vylon Hep, do whatever you want. Premature Burial, sure. Keep it up. Summon as many things as you want. You want to make another Epsilon? Make another Epsilon. I do not care. You got yourself another Epsilon. You want to attach Prism to it to pop a card? Do it. If you could choose Traps, I would choose the Trap card over there. But, you know, you do you. You chose Monster. You didn't hit anything of importance. You should have chose... Uh, I don't know if you can choose the Trap. I would have chose the Trap. Alright, so there we go. We got top deck. He top decks uh, Field Commander Roz. With the Roz, he's going to pick uh, Absolute Crusader. I guess that's fine. Uh, did he play Zera the Mant? He has not played Zera the Mant. He played uh, Archlord Zera, and he played Angel of Zera. He has not played Zera De uh, Deville, and he has not played Zera the Mant yet. But he's played every other Zera, which is not bad. And the duel, Vylon Tetra is dead. Field Commander Roz is at 2k attack. Luna is in death range. Next turn, Luna might lose the duel. This is getting a little depressing for me. The Zera deck was supposed to be a joke deck. Taro's deck was supposed to be a joke deck. Jinbei got Ojamas because they're jokes. Freaking Yoshizo got Light uh, What is it called? Um, what are they called? The, uh, Catastor. Uh, uh, Ally of, of Darkness cards because they're jokes. Luna did 2,400 burn. She's still in the duel. Luna will remain in the duel thanks to that burn. She has one turn left to do 1,300. Can she do it? She sets a card. I don't... Oh, there's a trap. Where there's a trap, there's a chance. He summons another Absolute Crusader. The attack shall begin. Vylon Stigma is dead. The game-winning attack is here. And it works! Zara's going to the finals! Team Tayo is in top four! Oh, God. Semi-finalist Team Tayo. Here we go. This tournament is going to be a weird one. Only one character in top four is a returning champion. Taro is a brand new character for top four with a brand new deck, the Zara deck. Ransborg is literally a new character. This is his first tournament. And he took down freaking Hunter Pace, Dragon, Haporia, and Akiza. Andre with his Phantom Beast deck. Phantom Beasts weren't supposed to be that good. Apparently they're good. And finally, oh, and he's Team Unicorn. And finally, Crow, who is one of the strongest characters we've ever seen. Like, literally one of the strongest characters we've ever seen. No jokes about Crow. He's He won the 200 character tournament. Here we go. Here we go. Can someone stop Crow from winning another tournament? Because the other three characters have not won a tournament. So if e if any of these characters stop Crow, it would be a miracle. Especially Andre, because Andre's... I don't think Phantom Beasts take down Black Wings. Like, in any reality. I don't care if they made new support for them, like, yesterday. I don't think they win it. I just don't think so. Don't judge me. I'm just telling you guys the truth. It's not supposed to happen. Alright, here we go. Crow versus Andre. Andre versus Taro is the most unlikely finals out of all of them. Alright, we got Fire Formation Tenki to get him Vivid Knight. And then he just sets set passes. Crow is going to summon Sirocco. That's a really great card. And he's got Gale already. And don't forget about Zoroshi. And we got a level 6, which means he's going for piercing. That's really bad for Andre. I told you all. 
I told you, Crow's a, a multiple time champ for a reason. He's one of the biggest champions we got, and that's massive piercing damage. That was a direct attack. And Gale is gonna not do anything, but as long as that piercing damage monster is there, these scapegoat tokens are more of a hindrance than a helper. So, not exactly a good situation to be in. Also, you need to kill Gale, no matter what. Alright, he's gonna go ahead and choose to use Phantom Beast Wild Horn. Wild Horn is gonna try and kill Gale, like I said, it needs to die. Icarus Attack says, well, if I have to die, I'm taking some stuff with me. And you let- you let him keep the tokens, because you know you can win the duel off of the tokens. Oh, that's brutal. And Kalut, that's game. That's the end of the duel. Turn 4 victory, Crow is going to the finals. You can't stop him, he's a champion! He's a multiple time champion for a reason! This is not, it's not negotiable. He's a champion. You can't stop him. All right, yep, scapegoats have been a big hindrance today <laughs> for some people. And there we go, Andre loses the duel. Andre still has the third place breather match, but who knows, maybe one of the other two characters can still stop Crow. Here we go. It's Ransborg versus Warrior of Zera. Sorry, it's Taro, but whatever. You know what I mean. Ransborg, our brand new character, has made it to top four in his first ever tournament. His deck isn't that complicated, so I'm kind of surprised that it's doing this well. Maybe 5Ds is just full of weak people? I don't know. The Neo decks were supposed to fix that, but who knows? Maybe the AI just can't, you know, work with it. And then we got Lu- oh wait, and then we got Taro, which, uh, he shouldn't even be here. He should not even be here. He was supposed to be a joke character. I'm not laughing, alright? He's supposed to be one of the fools that I get to laugh at. I don't get to laugh at him anymore. He's actually winning. This was not supposed to- he, he's going against the script. I wrote a script. And he's not- he's not following the script. Alright, either way, here we go. It's Ransborg versus Taro. Zera versus Mass Knight. Team Tayo versus Cosplayer. Team Cosplayer, who cares? Alright, set, set, pass. And Marauding Captain's a pretty good start for him. He's gonna get himself a uh, Noble Knight Joan. That's a decent monster. Noble Knight Joan cannot defeat Warrior of Zera. Warrior of Zera is safe. Can this man get a field spell? That is the question. Taro, did you get a field spell? He did not, but he got his own Marauding Captain. He's like, oh, you think you're the only one with these skills. Taro might be better at them, though. Taro might be both. Saku got rid of the Warrior of Zera. That's a big loss. And that was the worst play I've ever seen in my life, Taro. This is why you shouldn't be here. This is, uh, this is why you shouldn't be here. Trident Warrior, and there's no level 3s in the hand. Damn. That's a shame. Noble Knight Jones gonna go in and do 1600 damage. Not bad. And then, just to make sure he's safe, he plays his Cosmic Hero King Arthur. Not bad, either. Set, set, pass. Okay, Taro's in a lot of trouble if he's just playing passively. Uh, we got Mass Knight level 3. Are we gonna be evolving today? Let's find out. Mass Knight level 3 having exactly 1500 attack is actually pretty freaking good. It's a good monster. Alright, we're just gonna end our turn there. Absolute Crusader re uh, rejoins the field. A-forces will help out just a little bit, but not enough to stop King Arthur. And, uh, yeah, you're in a little bit of trouble. Warrior Lady of the Wasteland is here. We're gonna go ahead and let King Arthur take down the Absolute Man. And, uh, Warrior Lady of the Wasteland just gonna get a little tap in there. You know, just a little tap. We don't need to hurt him too much, but hurt him a little bit. Warrior of Zera is here, but no combo cards, obviously. Warrior, of Lace uh, Warrior Lady of the Wasteland will die for this. And we got ourselves Marauding Captain. Weird choice, but you know what? Choose whatever you like. I can't force you to choose anything. And we got Tribute Summon for Mass Knight level 5. Mass Knight level 5 is going to go in. Warrior of Zera is out of here. Taro is basically out of here at this point. I'm thinking that uh, Ransborg is actually going to go all the way to the finals on his first tournament. In his first ever tournament, he might go all the way. You have to kill Mass Knight level 5 or he summons level 7 and he has a guaranteed victory with the burn effect. And that's a guaranteed victory. All he has to do is summon level, se level 7 and he wins. Standby face, he summons level 7, he activates level 7's effect, and that would end the duel. You don't need to play A forces. All you have to do is activate your effect. 1500 burn. There you go. That's all it takes. Just like that, everyone, the winner is Ransborg. Ransborg has made it to the finals in his first 
ever tournament. The third place, third place breather match is going to be one of the most hilarious matches we see. It is going to be a Zera deck of Team Tayo versus a Unicorn deck of Team... Uh, sorry, a freaking um, Phantom Beast deck from Team Unicorn. This, this duel should be fun for a breather match. We're just going to have a nice breather match right now. And it should be a good one. We might be able to enjoy ourselves. Alright, let's see here. Where, who am I missing? That's not loading. Ah, there we go. Andre. Andre, stop hiding from me. We need you. Uh, where's Andre? Uh, it's trying to look for the Neo deck, guys. We're in the third place breathing match. I want to make sure I get the right decks this time. I don't want Andre to be dueling Aporia again. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, Rambor Ransborg is still on the screen. Just ignore that. It's time for Neo Taro versus Neo freaking and Andre in the third place breather match. I'm going to have a nice little breath. I'm going to enjoy myself because in the finals, if Ransborg wins in his first ever tournament, we have an undefeated character. Yeah, I don't know how he got here either. He shouldn't be in the finals, but he's doing damn good. And he took out some really hard opponents. But can he take out the number one 5D's character, Crow? That's the real question. Sanctuary in the Sky on the first turn? All right. Marauding Captain? All right. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Tore Apart? Do you have a level 5 Synchro? You do have a level 5 Synchro. That's not a bad play either. X Saber Wayne's a damn good monster. Okay. X Saber Wayne's going to use his effect. Goddamn. Shine Knight in defense mode? Sure, why not? And Tore Apart's effect. You can't activate a trap. Key Mouse will at least get you a level 3 monster. X Saber Air Bell. All right, Andre. That's not too bad. And then we're going to go ahead and see what happens next. We got a set. Just a set. We got Absolute Crusader. The damage is looking really good. Tore apart, stops any traps. Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, will die. And it looks like Andre's in a lot of trouble right now. But Call of the Haunted will bring back Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts. Let's just see if this guy could draw a poly to save his life. We only saw one poly today, and it was an accidental poly. Uh, by this guy. So Phantom Beast is here. We got the big cattle drive to draw two more cards. And we can only destroy the Shine Knight, which is a very depressing thing to see. But hey, at least he drew some more cards, so that might help out quite a bit. Reinforcements of the army. That's pretty good. Reinforcements of the army. What are we going to get? Marauding Captain's really good. Especially if you have, happen to have another monster in hand. No way. You have that many monsters. And Field of Commander Roz is here. What does he want? He wants Absolute Crusader. He wants more than one, apparently. So, we're going to go in. Torpart says no trap cards allowed. And then we're going to go in with that monster. Goodbye, Kazelle, again. And we're going to go in with that monster, putting Andre in a super desperate situation. Is Taro going to actually get third place? If he gets third place, I'm going to be super surprised with him. And I'm actually going to be more excited to see his deck in the future. Pot of Green... Why would you set... Why would you... Oh, you... You couldn't use it last turn, but why would you set it? You didn't have to set it. All right, Phantom Beast, Wild, Wild Horn is here again, but this card cannot win you any duels. In fact, you're still about to lose, Andre. Two back row better be the right ones. Nope, it's a Zera deck. He has a lot of cards to support Zera, but it's a Zera deck. And Phantom Beast Horn. So he did this ahead of time because Tor Port's effect. At least he was smart enough to do that. Alright, here we go, and we're going to have Arabellum destroy X Saber Wayne, we're going to have this monster destroy that, and do piercing, his effect is he does piercing, that's putting Taro in a very desperate situation, looks like Team Unicorn is not leaving this tournament without that bronze medal, alright, goodbye X Saber Arabellum, no, he had Mirror Force, okay, he had choices and he chose this, the next card he plays is going to be... He summons a Rage Battle Ox that does piercing for everybody. He has Premature Burial. Oh, God. He's got Gazelle back on the field. Four monsters. He's going for game. He's going to try and end this duel before Taro can even get a Destiny draw. The Zera is gone. And the Phantom Beast does not matter. This duel is exactly over. That's 3,400. That's game. And the winner is Andre. Not bad from our bunny Andre here.
That is it. So, with a comeback, Uni Team Unicorn will take third place. Team Tayo takes fourth. But now it's time for the big duel of the day, the grand finals of the Neo Fortune Cup. All the Neo decks have worked out to be bad and good, but we haven't seen them against other series, so we don't know just how bad or how good they are. All we know is that uh, Crow, our best 5Ds character, is going to be taking on Ransborg, our newest 5Ds character. So what do you guys bet on? Do you guys bet on Old Reliable, or do you bet on the new shit? There's got to be some new stuff. My cats are doing just fine. They're all good kitties. Alright, let's see here. Uh, Where's Ransborg at? And it looks like we're ready to go. This is going to be the grand finals of our Neo Fortune Cup. Everyone... Let me know in the comments below, will Crow win or will it be Ransborg? Most of you are saying Crow uh, will win. Some of you say Crow will choke. Interesting. The new character versus this guy. <laughs> this old champ. A forces to start the duel that will make his deck a little more powerful, which will help out against Crow's synchro monsters. Crow's going to start with Breeze, which means he has a combo. No, he does not. Why would he start with Breeze if he did not have a combo? All right. Well, we got Field Commander Roz, which means he can guarantee a monster next turn. And there goes the A-Forces. There goes everything. It looks like every single card was destroyed. But Roz should still be able to get him a monster. He still gets Joan. Okay, Joan will help. Joan will definitely help. Crow's like, now that I left you wide open, I'm going to use Blizzard to combo into Zephyr, which there are actually too many tuners on the field. Monsterborn's going to make up for that, though, by getting Roz out here, and Roz can Synchro Summon. And Roz says you can get, oh, you don't have a Warrior Monster, but whatever. We got a level 7 Synchro. This is his most dangerous Synchro Monster. It's the Armor Master. That is the best card in Crow's deck. However, Saku beats it. <laughs> Old School Armor beats the card. Okay. Crow is left with just a Blizzard, and we know he just drew a monster that can beat Blizzard. It's the Noble Knight Joan. Noble Knight Joan is going to defeat this card, which means that that Ransborg has a field advantage. Very small one, but a field advantage. We have a set, set pass. All right, Crow's looking pretty good. He can make a comeback with that. And we got Trident Warrior. Do we have a combo? Trident Warrior is going to special summon the Mass Knight level 3. And we're going in for some damage. We got rid of Zephyr. We got rid of life points. That is going to be 3,100 damage. Crow is in a lot of trouble here. And if that Mass Knight survives, he can make it up to level 5. He's going to go ahead and put... He drew another Blizzard. That's a hell of a draw. Zephyr may not be the best choice. He did not have any other option, but that will keep him in the duel. He's going to evolve level 3. Level 5 is on the field. He could do a thousand burn or choose to attack. I would attack. I would say, screw it. I'm here to win the duel. And we got Field Commander Roz to guarantee a monster next turn. Field of Commander Roz will do just that. We are guaranteeing a monster next turn. It's going to be Noble Knight just because it has 1900 attack. Even though it loses three when it attacks. And there goes Black Sonic! That's the best trap in the game! That trap literally is so busted. All the monsters are removed from play. He lost everything. Kalut Synchro Summons. That's going to change this duel forever. We have ourselves Graham the Shining Star. Graham's effect activates. He special summons that card. We have all the monsters in the world. This duel is over for Ransborg. There's no way he's coming back after all of that. That was beautiful absolutely beautiful by crow and he's even gonna synchro just to piss me off <laughs> he's just like come on even if you play a defense mode monster i will pierce it i will pierce the crap out of that black sonic as long as you have a face up uh, blackwing monster you can remove from play all of your opponent's attacking monsters and that was brutal all right crow's gonna go ahead and attack of course mirror force will try to save the day but crow has a card left and that's all he needs, because what can Ransborg possibly draw to take down Shura? He's going to draw Noble Knight Joan, and it's not strong enough because its effect says it loses 300 attack when it attacks, which means he needs one more Warrior Monster to make the difference. And guess what? He drew Warrior Lady of the Wasteland. That makes the difference, and Shura's going to die. He loses his Shura. He's losing all of his monsters. Crow only has one trap left, but can he top deck a monster to save himself? Mirror Force was a Destiny draw. Destiny draw uh, takes place of whatever the card was. And that is... 
Is this it? That is it! We have a brand new undefeated champion, Ransborg, the man who just joined our AI tournaments today, defeated even the massively powered Crow. Crow couldn't take on the might of Ransborg and his Mass Knight deck. This is your newest champion. This is your newest threat in the AI tournaments. That is what I'm talking about. That was a hell of a duel. That was back and forth. It was stressful. But at the end of the day, Ransborg wins the duel. At the very end of the day, he wins the duel. He wins the tournament. The Neo Fortune Cup goes to our brand new character. His mixed warrior deck with burn deck. Apparently, that's a bad gateway. Okay, did this, this site go down when I tried to end the tournament? All right, end the tournament this time. Okay, there we go. Ransborg in his first ever tournament went 6-0. He went from round 1 to round 6. And he beat Crow. He beat Andre. He beat everybody. Taro. Luna, honorable mention. D-back, honorable mention. Yusei, honorable mention. Akiza, honorable mention. That is going to be it, everybody. Ransborg is your newest champion. And he will be appearing in this Saturday's tournament on Twitch. If you want to see Ransborg, the undefeated duelist, duel again, he will be dueling this Saturday with a much wider range of duelists, not just from 5Ds. But there will be one more new duelist appearing this uh, Saturday. And I will say the new duelist is somebody you have all seen on my channel before, just not someone you've seen in our tournaments. I hope you're all excited to see them. I hope Ransborg is excited to be in Saturday's tournament. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I want to see Ransborg go up against other duelists that uh, are from different series and to see if his deck can match up to those. Because 5Ds seems to be one of the weaker series, especially if something like Zera can get top four. Either way, I'll see you all then. Please remember to like and subscribe on YouTube and follow me on Twitch. Bye bye everybody.